Dante? I am. Uh huh. Oh, it is. All the boys to the yard. A Beyonce. Yes. Bring all our kids to the yard. Oh, it is. I do bring all no, my kids to the yard. Bring all our kids to the yard. Yes. Try, try that. <laughs> hey there, how are you? It's a tight ship, that's for sure. I do. Who's that, Terry Frey? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> they all just sit there on the couch, don't say anything. That's right. They know better. That's right, they do. We haven't talked since... <laughs> 99. Right. Mm -hmm. like flowers in the attic. Uh, oh, oh, stop no that. No wire hangers. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, then. <laughs> Speaking of which, a big uh, apology to the Ramses. Oh, I know. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. Right. Officially, yeah. On I mean, behalf of all the, uh, world? the people in the world, <laughs> we'll be the first to step up and say, sorry. Well, Maybe not officially yet. This guy is crazy. See how creepy looking this guy is? He's dead to rights. Yeah, he uh, is. There was but no all the reason. way in Bangkok? Yeah, that's that's where you go if you get away with murder. And you really? know that any day they could figure it out. <laughs> that's where you go. What do you think? You stay around? Oh, I'm cool. Oh, well. Uh -huh. Somebody's going to say, oh, and I took out Lacey Peterson. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. What was that? Conda girl? Yeah, her too. <laughs> yeah, and... uh to OJ, we're we're sorry too. Maybe, <laughs> yeah, right. anything's possible now. I guess so. Uh, that's what it, that's the way no, it's there was looking. no there was no reason for them to actually bring this guy to justice. Everyone had forgotten about it. They had assumed right. it was it was over. Right. So the, this guy, did you see the way he was what? when he was? Did you see the footage of him being brought to I didn't see the footage, custody no. by the by the Bangkok police or whoever they are? Oh, oh, he God. looked like he wanted to kill everybody. <laughs> Too bad Patty wasn't alive to see this. Uh, oh, but she knows. Okay. She's laying there going, yes. Well, you know, Justice has been served. Uh-huh. Not quite yet, but it's getting there, yeah. Yeah, close. Uh -huh. And they say they told her before uh, she did die that uh, they were moving in on this suspect. Mm. Oh. It's not like they just figured this out yesterday and made the move. Oh, really? Mm. So they've been watching they've him investigation. for a while. They've been following this guy for a good, solid number of months and even years. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. And he had been... Uh, he had been interviewed, I think, when she died. Yeah, and then after, uh, upwards of four years ago, he was working as a teacher in California and gotten some kind of sexual uh, pedophile <laughs> problem. Yeah. And he took his computer. Never good. Uh -huh. yeah, I know. <laughs> Anytime they seize the Yeah, we're going to need I think it's when they seized the, the computer that the investigation on him uh, yeah. becoming John Bonet's killer right. began. And then uh, something... He had some love notes to John Bonet on there or something. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. <laughs> Yeah, and he's now kind of admitted it, they say, this morning. Yeah, he did. Yeah. He said, yeah, you got me, more or less. Yeah, I was in love with her. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. How many years OJ later? will probably make a statement today. Yeah. You see? <laughs> These things happen. It's ten years later. Wow. Uh-huh. said he strangled her. Man, to think where we were ten years ago. Oh, right here. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. What's that out there? <laughs> What's that now, Stephen? Uh, he strangled her. That's, mm -hmm. he yeah, that's how little wiry guys like him do it, if they do it. Yeah, but he said it was an accident. Right. right? It was just supposed Oops. to be sexual asphyxiation. She was really but, into it. Right. Yeah. She loved it. Okay. Well, there's obviously a lot going on this morning. Well, just that. And <laughs> uh, we'll come back. We'll get the started out of the knees. The team. They've been apart for nearly nine months. Uh -huh. Now the moment of truth. Yeah. Will Jessica and Nick get together again? They've only been apart nine months. Uh-huh. <laughs> Seems like longer than that. I know. Doesn't it? Hmm. Seems like. Yeah. In months. their minds. Seems like 10 years. months. <laughs> They've been apart for nearly nine months. Right, nearly nine months. Not even nine months. Now the moment of truth. Ew. Will Jessica and Nick get together again? Oh, jeez. It could happen, uh -huh. at least for a moment. Oh. When Jessica MCs Sunday's Teen Choice Awards, Nick's a nominee, and Fox is poking a little fun in this promo. Uh -huh. Join host Jessica Simpson and Dane Cook with Hillary Duff, Keanu Reeves, Sandra Bullock, Ashton Kutcher, Jessica Alvin, Shabar, Nick Lachey. Hey, that could be awkward. Oh, Dave. Oh, whoa. Well, we'll be there if the big moment happens. And that's today's Couples News. Uh -huh. Wow. Yeah, extra, yeah, extra. <laughs> Okay, so one of the Teen Choice Awards this weekend? I think so. Is it air this sure. weekend? Are they film it this weekend? Or what's the dilly? I uh, couldn't tell you. All right, I think it films Sunday, and okay. then airs yeah. Monday, maybe. I don't okay. know. Okay, well, we're out. we're all over, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, <laughs> we are your I'll Teen to, Choice Award authorities. I'll have to call my kids for you. I'll okay, there and find out for you because they would know. They they watch oh, beginning to end Teen Choice geez, Awards. Jeez, please. Huh? Jeez, yeah. please. Okay. It's like, um, can we have dinner before such and such time because the Teen Choice Awards time? Mm -hmm. like, oh, and right. Jay Simp is the host. Uh, and Dan Cook. And Dan Cook. Oh, yeah. And they have been uh, part of a rumor, together. a little whirlwind there. Yeah. 
Uh huh. Yes. Yeah. When I s- went to L. A. a few years ago, went to the comedy store. I saw Dean Cook do a twenty-minute set. Yeah. I wasn't that impressed. Really? But since then, he's like taken off. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, there are way better comics there that night than him. That's the greatest thing about the comedy store. They should have one here. I know. Keep rotating them in all through the day. Just yeah. one comedian after another doing twenty-minute sets. Yeah. Well, he's a hot number right about now. Oh, jeez. It airs on Sunday. On Sunday. Yes. Is it? Taped that same day? They don't do that thing live, I'll tell you that right now. No, it's probably no. already been taped. <laughs> isn't, isn't, isn't this the one where uh, Kevin Federline actually uh, does something live? or Well, supposedly. He's going to close the show yeah, out I with a little... I think he does, yeah. Oh, I can't wait. With a little number? Yeah, with his a own little very little, little number. number. Okay. Yeah. Great. Can't wait for that. Well, this, uh, this sounds like I can't miss, honestly, television <laughs> must-see situation. Yeah. I think I'm going to tell... My mom. Hey, can we get dinner done? I gotta go. <laughs> Watch the Choice Awards. Well, they do. It's, it's crazy. I, I, I don't my blame house. them, is what I'm saying. I'll be doing the same thing. I look at them like, what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Schedule around the Teen Choice Awards. You don't have a TV Sorry. anywhere in the dinner eating facility? Vicinity? Oh, yes, we do. Yeah, we have a big big screen in the All right, room. so then why, why can't they eat dinner and watch? Well, yeah. no, that's because it's the beauty of dinner. <laughs> TV well, time. <laughs> same size as yours, Hot Shot. So, okay. um, but it, it uh, because that is, I mean, their dad is the one that controls that TV. Uh huh, so he doesn't allow He's not him. about oh. to let. That's, that's Even his though you have baby. a big screen, are we doubting that she has a big screen? Oh, it's just, we can all kitchen. afford big screens in the kitchen, man. Yeah, well, great. not in the kitchen, the but fridge. it's in the... What's your, what's your definition of a big screen, by well, the way? Well, I don't, I don't big know. Big screen better be at least 40 inches. It tall. is. Oh, okay. Oh. It is. All right, I'm just saying. A magnet. I don't want you to be Mounted saying, wall, I don't want you to be, you be saying 37 no, 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 inches or 32 no, 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 inches no, no, no. is a big screen. No, no, I mean, it's no. a nice screen. Yeah. It's not a big screen. No. It's like 42, right? All right, 42 is your, is your first stop, right. perhaps, where you may be able to be qualified as a big screen. Right. Okay. Okay. That works. Yes. Mm-hmm. So Especially in the kitchen. Well, it's not in, in the kitchen. In the, that's great. In the kitchen, that's oh, a big screen. Geez. Next Mount, to the blender. It's mounted on the fridge. It's mm-hmm. like got an ice maker under it. Wow. Awesome. They do have refrigerators with little TVs in them these oh, days. So. Refrigerators with TVs built yes. in? Yeah. You haven't they seen do. it? You haven't cool. seen it? Yeah. The ice maker's going by the wayside? No, the ice oh. maker's still there. Not at all. Built in the TV. Yeah. I mean, built in the, the refrigerator. Yes. I have not seen that. Yeah. So when you're going for a snack, you don't want to miss a second. <laughs> <laughs> got to go buy the Best Buys. They got a lot of them. Oh, <laughs> Best Buys. <laughs> mm-hmm. So make yeah. sure you're in front of the TV, 7.30, 6.30 Central. On Sunday. Yeah, that's the red carpet pre-show. Yes. Huh. The show starts at 8. And who's hosting the red carpet? Is it, uh, what's his face, always? As usual? Yeah. Uh, probably. Yeah, Seacrest out. Fox. Yeah. Have <laughs> uh, you just snapped, Steven? I, yeah, I snapped. <laughs> well, any mention of Seacrest makes him snap. Right. <laughs> I thought I just heard you snap. Well, it was this thing I was playing with in my hand. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Don't even tell us about it. Whoa. Do you realize how many weird <laughs> senses come out of your mouth? I do, yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right, so Sunday night, I'll be there. Yeah. With my built-in refrigerator TV. <laughs> Did you? Why? Gotta I mean, have so one You have now. two people that tell you that they have them, and you're looking at me like... No, I believe you. I'm getting and one. And they're really cool. <laughs> they one truly today. are. Mm-hmm. Okay. So is your mom cooking dinner or no? I need to know if I'm going to come over. Yes. <laughs> make it a brisket. <laughs> oh, yes. My favorite. <laughs> yes. The little brisket. Yeah. cups at the end. I don't, dessert. I don't know what that even is. <laughs> anyway, of course I do. Um, uh, I do really. have some more news sure. about Jessica Simpson, though, if you would like uh, to of hear Of course. It. It's a great segue from the last story we just told you. There's going to be an awkward meeting between Jay Simp and uh, Ann Lake. Yes. Well, and this does have, this little uh, information does have to do with uh, Nick Lachey as well. Okay. And now, Grant. I, I don't know how, you know, true it is. Reliable the source yeah. may be. Yeah, because apparently... What's um, the source? Uh, it's called Times Magazine. Times Magazine? Mm-hmm. Not, is that like yeah. the Best Buys? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, I guess so. So I don't so know... it's not Newsweeks? No, and it's not Time. It's not Time? There's a magazine called Times Magazine? Yeah, supposedly. Isn't, is that allowed? For there to be a magazine called Times Magazine? Again. There's I, high times. I know that. <laughs> because if that is allowed, then uh, I'm going to be the first to roll out Sports Illustrated. <laughs> <laughs> and make a fortune of people who uh, mistakenly buy it. Yeah, people love sports magazines that come out a week late. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know. Love it. Times Magazine. Times Magazine. Okay. Supposedly she told this little uh, magazine that, yes. quote, Nick didn't pack too well, if you know what I mean. Oh, jeez. But I got over it. See, I don't believe she necessarily said that, but I don't also 
dispute that it's true. Okay. I want to believe it's true. I think he's got a <laughs> tiny little weenie, Terry, that little Whoa. gay boy. Whoa, and, I have uh, more, though, too. Mm-hmm. So she, she, according to Times Magazine, made a reference to him being an underwhelming-sized man. Correct. A so. little stubby kind of guy. I don't know how stubby, but small. I knew he ran with my crew. <laughs> anyway, she also is quoted as saying, Nick's small package was a problem sometimes, like the first time we had sex, to tell you the truth. Well, she was a virgin, supposedly, the first time they had sex. And I everyone, uh, no one really disputes that she was a virgin. Right. So how would she know from big, small... Well, she just says, I didn't really feel much. I faked the whole thing. I really felt sorry okay. for him. I still loved him, though. I really felt sorry for him, oh, she said. Because uh-huh. according to Times... Magazine. Right. Okay. Pretty sure a publicist would have choked her at that point. Yeah. <laughs> Probably not a good move to do. Mm-hmm. Well, but, but I agree with you. It's unless true. she's so filled with hate <laughs> and uh-huh. bitterness uh-huh. that she had to tell someone. So why not a little Well, he is dating raggedy rag like Times Magazine. Yeah, but he is dating what what's her name? Vanessa Min- Manila. Manila, yeah. Yeah, and oh. she's she's Manila, pretty. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. Manila. And so, I mean, mm-hmm. if she... It's probably an upgrade from Derek yeah. to your small one. And yeah. she's uh, <laughs> she's due to get the uh, inheritance from the uh, the envelope fortune. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what about the Nilla, Nilla wafers? Part of oh, that the too? wafer fortune, too, right? Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> that's a really great invention, that manila envelope. <laughs> yes. Anyway. I said envelope, but that's all right. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, so... I don't know. I uh, maybe I need to find this little Times magazine. Something tells me it's an overseas dilly because yeah. I don't think anything domestically could call themselves Times magazine. I think right. It's from the New York Times. Oh, is that right? Yeah. No. I mean, I did a search for Times magazine and it came out. I New don't York think. Times. That, no. I don't think they have a little weekend magazine. Maybe? I don't think the little weekend magazine is reporting in what is a part of the New York Times that Nick Lachey has a small little weenie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. That's probably not their headline, but they could have interviewed her, possibly. Mm-hmm. Well, if that turns out to be true, you'll let us know, Stephen, because I know you're going to do a thorough check on this and be able to verify whether that's the case or not. Well, you know, I'm just trying to trying to get it all in there for you. Something tells me some, somewhere in London there's a little tabloid <laughs> called Times Magazine. Right. That could that's, be too. that's my guess. But I have no knowledge of this. Whatsoever. Right. I, just so. taking, taking a stab. <laughs> but there is a Times magazine, I'm sure, yeah, in the Sunday Times. I don't know what day it comes out, All but right. I, was, I would assume Sunday, yes. All right. <laughs> Making a lot of assumptions here. I know. But it is pretty interesting, if, you know, for her to say that. Mm-hmm. I bet she said it. I think she I bet that. it's true! <laughs> but don't you think Vanessa would be, you know... Well, of- Vanessa's got a very tight little bit of... Whoa! Oh. She, she'll feel anything? Mm. Is that it? So that's the key. <laughs> that's the key. Okay. So, so if that's the key, then we can assume that Jessica doesn't have one. No! She's, she's flapping in the ro- wind. She's got a big rodeo deal down there. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> For a virgin. Yeah, that's great. Well... Some girls, whether they're virgins or not, just come built with a bigger one than uh, than other women. Just like men come built with bigger ones, small ones. I understand. Odd shaped ones. Yes. Freckled ones. Whoa! <laughs> I don't know. I've never. Is there, is there such <laughs> really? a thing? I don't know. You tell I me, I've never freckled. seen a freckled one. You know better than me. Is there such a thing? Is it possible to have a freckled dilly? Or I what? don't know. Do but but okay. if I came across a freckled one, I'd... I think the ginger's probably a freckled one. Mm-hmm. I mean, it stands to reason. The freckled everywhere Got else. Crap! Doesn't stop there. <laughs> that would be horrible. <laughs> Why don't you call a freckle? You know, freckle. <laughs> we know a couple of ginger kids, right? Come across. Come across. Whenever we're going outside, um. Fill in the blank. Okay. Well, uh, all right. Interesting. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> hmm. So. Uh, Stephen, callers are already calling in to dispute the. Uh, well, the knowledge you just try to throw at us and make it seem like you knew what you were talking about with the Times Magazine. Well, I did an internet search Times Magazine, and that's what came up. So that's all I can all I can do. Yeah, but until we questioned you on it, you never even told us that part of it. You were throwing it out as fact. No, I Christine, said it was are you there? Uh-oh. An internet search that I did. Christine, oh. you didn't Hello? say it was an internet I search until did. we doubted that uh, that was the Times are Magazine. You there? <laughs> yes, you're on the air, Christine. Go ahead. We'd like to have a uh, conversation. It's kind of like the Enquirer and stuff. It it looks nice and everything. It's not all papery, fake, just, black and white stuff, but, mm-hmm. it, but it's not the most credible either. Uh-huh. So it's it's uh, one of the newer tabloids or what? Where is it out of? Yeah. yeah I see it at 7-Elevens all the time. Oh. Really? Yeah. Is it like... 
<laughs> would you know if it's produced and published in the United States or is it an overseas deal? It's weekly, so but it's like I think it's a U.S. one. I'm All pretty right. sure it is. I can. I'll be at a Seven Eleven in like thirty uh, minutes. I don't and I'll doubt find it. out. Right. <laughs> we can send Get Minnie up to too. one mm-hmm. and find it. Well, thank you, Christine. Thanks for setting the record straight. There's a lot of misinformation, especially from our news reporter, you would think would be more thorough in investigating a story. Just throws out facts willy-nilly. Just throws it's out facts It's actually not, my, not even my story, to be honest with you. It's Terry's story. Well, I'm the one, though, yeah, you that threw out, said... You threw out facts. That's the even uh, further to the point. It wasn't even your story, and you're trying to blow it apart. I'm not blowing it apart. You just said, what is Times Magazine? And I said, well, I think it's from the New York Times. Fountain of misinformation! <laughs> All right, then LA Times Magazine is called Times Magazine as well. Uh-huh. But like, it's probably not the same one. You're like Dan Rather, man. You should <laughs> step down. <laughs> he loved that one. That Dan Rather had to step down? Because yes. him and his people took down a oh, Dan yeah. Rather. Oh, it's kind of an institution. Which probably was coming. But, uh... <laughs> Just please, can you have a little credibility sometime at some point in your life uh, as a news reporter? Is that going to happen? Maybe tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow. We'll look forward to that. The team. Well, it might look like a spider bite that doesn't heal, but researchers say a rare staph bacteria is spreading skin infections to the general population. Oh, jeez. This is a little scary, Terry. You listening to this? Yeah. Okay, maybe I should start. Okay, let's listen. Well, it might look like a spider bite that doesn't heal, but research. Yeah, that's what I tell the women. Wow. Mm-hmm. Don't worry about it. Just a spider just, bite. Just a spider bite. <laughs> no, just, just, just go to town. Mm-hmm. Whoa, just, just go to town. It's not just contagious. Just go to town. Not contagious. <laughs> Right. Well, it might look like a spider bite that doesn't heal, but right. researchers say a rare staph bacteria is spreading skin infections to the general population. Ow. It used to never be seen outside of hospitals and nursing homes, but now yeah. it's spreading through skin contact or shared items like towels. Oh, I love sharing wow. towels. You you do? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Hey, dude, okay. you done with that? Oh, cool. It's extra wet. <laughs> Thank oh, you. Oh, come on. Rub it down here. Mm. Whoa. Shared towels. <laughs> right. Weird. It's spreading through skin contact or shared items like towels. Like towels. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just one of the items that we share. Yeah, just that <laughs> oh, man. Would you like to borrow my jock strap as well? I mean, mm. like... Shared items like hemorrhoid cream. <laughs> oh, gross. I, mean, I know. The hell? Yeah. <laughs> shared items like dentures. <laughs> I just don't understand how towels is really considered a shared item. Maybe I guess. a hand towel? Uh, well, okay, I see. When you just wipe your hands. Well, th- aren't there blowers everywhere now? Yeah, or the, the paper towel dispensers? <laughs> oh, yeah. blowers. If you could use a hand towel, I don't ever if, remember using a hand towel outside of my home. Well, but and if you're at the gym. Sh- Why, at the gym? At the gym I, don't sh- I don't share hand towels with, well, with paper towels. With old Barney in the locker <laughs> down the way. Hey, can I, can I see that real quick? Oh, uh-huh. hand towels. <laughs> Gross. When you it's wipe off the seat of your stationary bike. <laughs> <laughs> What's this now? Oh, you know the towel you use when you wipe off the I'm seat sure of your you're stationary very fam- bike? I'm sure you're very familiar with that. Uh, <laughs> he's very stationary. Because he's always on the stationary bike. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's spreading through skin contact or shared items like towels. Right. Infection is resistant to penicillin, but the good news, uh-huh. some sulfa drugs and antibiotics do work against the germs. Phew. Okay, we're all good then. Actually, mm-hmm. it happened in my high school. They had got into the turf and everybody got staph infection. Really? Gross. Big gaping wounds on their foreheads. Nice. Oh. <laughs> well, I've heard too. In rare cases, it can be fatal. All right. Well, there's so. the there's the silver lining then. Yeah, All right. Isn't that great? <laughs> what else is going on, Terry? Infection. What else is happening? Uh, this might be kind of surprising. I don't know, Britney Spears. Is there anything surprising anymore these days, <laughs> Terry? Nah, probably not. Especially okay. Not after finding John Bonet's murder. That's there's a great <laughs> point. Mean, on the morning that we found John Bonet's murderer, <laughs> ten years later, when the whole world yeah. had accused the That's parents. Right. To the point where it caused so much stress, the mom has died. Mm-hmm. We're all murderers for killing Miss Binet, Miss Ramsey, mm-hmm. for all the stress. Don't think the stress didn't have something to do with the cancer that ultimately uh, took her out, Terry. Right. I mean, do you feel a little guilty for uh, we all? There's really no one who didn't assume that because they didn't have a suspect that John Binet's parents had to have done it. I know. Not just losing your daughter, but then having the whole world believe you did it? Yeah. You feel a little bad this morning or no? Is it just me? 
Uh, probably just yeah. you. Oh, that's just you. <laughs> Could be, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Anyway. Uh, cold-hearted snake, Jerry Free. <laughs> I love you like that. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Right. Anyway, apparently Britney Spears has told uh, the upcoming issue of People magazine that she, she didn't plan her latest pregnancy. Oh, really? Yeah, surprise, mm. huh? Most women plan to get pregnant a week after they give birth. <laughs> I know. <laughs> she says that she is uh, looking forward to not being pregnant anymore. and that she Yeah, did. she's been pregnant for like five years straight. Yeah. I don't blame her. That's pretty much how she's feeling. Mm-hmm. Apparently, she has uh, gained about 40 pounds between both children, you know, both pregnancies. Pregnancies. Uh, yeah. uh, and she claims that uh, after she has this child, uh, uh, she's going to diet and hit the gym. Uh, for now. I don't get it. Uh, huh? But for now, she's just happy, you know, giving in. I and need Morse code. Okay, no worry about it. <laughs> you can figure it out if you really thought about it. Steven got it. Really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That says a lot about me, then. Anyway, she's content to, you know, eat her way into uh, happy, to pregnant bliss. All right. So there you go. Yes. Yeah. She says, quote, crunching ice cream and chocolate. Oh, my God. Uh-huh. I'll get up in the middle of the night, and I'll get her. She's, well, she's just fat. So. Okay. See, I'm actually listening to Terry, unlike you two. <laughs> I'm not to Terry, too. That's my problem. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that'll and get I'm you. And I'm just rambling. <laughs> that, yeah. Talking that'll about the you. ice cream, I, I was in. That'll get you nowhere. Yeah, exactly. I <laughs> fast. Couldn't follow. And I love by, getting nowhere fast. Yeah. And by the way, the story of my life. Kevin Federline did a little interview with uh, GQ, and you'll be happy to know that he aced the GED. Okay. Oh, <laughs> aced it. <laughs> aced the Jed. All right. Is this quote not the hardest thing in the world? You think? Mm-hmm, Way mm-hmm. to go! We should all take it. See who would do the best. Oh, that would be kind of interesting. Okay. <laughs> I'd be nervous. Well, I mean, all right, I'm confused, but anyway, Why? I'm not going to bother. Oh, all right. I didn't know there was. Th- there's an actual test, the GED. Yes. I thought it's just a degree. It's a general equivalency degree. It's a degree. It's not, not a test. Degree. Just get it. Probably you have to take a test. test yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a, there's a final test for it. I think so. Yes. All right. Obviously, I didn't get there. Uh, yes. <laughs> what else is going on? Also, uh, Paris Hilton, uh, she is doing the whole no sex for a year. Yeah, there's been a lot of talk about her about becoming celibate, Terry. Right. right. Well, right. apparently, this is called the Single Girls Club. And, Poor Miss uh, Benet. Oh, whoa. Yes. And included in the single girls club is Serena Williams. They're like buddies now. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, because T- Paris is such a good tennis player. Yeah, <laughs> yes, she is. <laughs> mm-hmm. She's got a hell of a back hit. <laughs> oh. Serena Williams also celibate? Yeah, apparently. Yes. And uh, in this little single girls club. The page is still celibate. <laughs> mm-hmm. That has not changed. You want to join the little Paris Hilton Serena Williams club or what? Oh, they'd have to join my club. I, I oh, it is. <laughs> You've been there club. longer, so you're not joining any club of theirs. No. They'd have to jump on board with you. Exactly. Well, there's not a- only the president, I'm also a member. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine just one day rolling into where I can see Pasty hanging with Paris and Serena. Wouldn't that be? Well, he already has met her, you know, in Vegas. Didn't meet her. You were in the same oh. club with her. You were within a 20-foot radius of her, right? Right. right. So that's meeting meet her. And you were the one who came back with the reviews that she cannot dance. Can't dance. Can't dance. Awesome. You even you even displayed for us the moves that she was <laughs> that she was putting out there in the Vegas club, right? I did, yeah. I mean I can't remember how those moves uh, went. Oh, I bet to... you can. I bet you can. <laughs> <laughs> Is it possible you can just get out of your chair there and just remind us of what kind of moves Paris had for a second? Oh uh, yeah. Everyone's yeah. turning around looking at you oh, now, yeah, so I know. don't feel oh, nervous. Really. I mean, the Puma sweatshirt jacket's really going to make this. Yeah. Go, Pasty. The, the jeans yeah, sagging. Go. The sa- Oh, no. <laughs> Horrifying. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Maybe the Pooh fell out of his chair. You all right there, really? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> He's not doing himself, you know. He's doing Paris. Yes, he is, every night. <laughs> oh, oh in his dream. Sure hope so. That's what he remembers Paris doing on top of some uh, platform. Was At what bar, Pasty? Uh, tau? A tau. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I've been here yes. over there. Oh, like Not pure. No, no. Where's Tao? What casino's Tao in now again? The Caesar's, Venetian. I think. Caesar's, Venetian. Venetian. No, Caesar's is pure. I thought it was Venetian. Venetian is probably Tao. No. I think it was Venetian. Mm-hmm. All the same. They're all the yeah, I can't. <laughs> pure Tao, Pirates whatever. Pirates of the Caribbean crap. <laughs> right. Fire. Jet is in the Mirage. And that's, uh, Tao's not in the, in the Palms. Well, then I guess it's the Venetian. I'm thinking it must be the Venetian. Yeah. Oh, He's looking it up. Doesn't you know, exactly don't you sound right, though. Yeah, I hear him look it up. Yeah. Pipes with his feet. I know. <laughs> mm-hmm. You type the way Paris dances. 
<laughs> very clumsily. A uh, very a uh, clumsily. <laughs> Apparently, there is a bet within this little uh, single girls club to see who can go the longest. Who can go the longest without having any sexual intercourse? <laughs> Dave should join the club. Yeah, he'd be he'd beat them all. Mm -hmm. hands down. But they're allowed to take matters into their own hands within this bed. Uh, I would imagine. Apparently, I don't know. I bet you Serena's one of the all-time great masturbators there. What you think? Uh, I just. Uh, Going out on the limb, you know. Yeah, yeah. you picture it. I have no knowledge of this. All I right. Was never invited over for a for a viewing, but uh, <laughs> for a viewing. <laughs> but she's a very aggressive tennis player, Terry. Yes, that she That tells is. me all I need to know. She's mm. really aggressive with herself. The way she rushes <laughs> to the net. Yeah. Okay then. <laughs> Thank you so much, Pasty. Yes. Town in the Venetian. Ten thousand square foot nightclub located in the Venetian. Yes. And I'm sure you were rolling all through oh, every every, I saw every square every foot of it. Every square foot of it. Yes. yes. They have a nice little outside area you can go to. Oh. It's a, it's a nice club. I and like that's it. when somebody from the station saw you, but you had no recollection of it because you were so just oh, inebriated. Right. Yes, yes. Who was I can't remember who saw him. Jennifer, Jennifer the, the intern. intern. Jennifer the intern. Oh, that's right, 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 right. right. Somebody yeah. he used to work with. I still like yes. It. Jessica the intern. Yeah. Well, then uh, went on to oh. become a... Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. She went up to Pasty. Said hello. Pacey said hello back. <laughs> they exchanged a warm embrace. Yeah. And then when we got, they got back to the workplace here, Pacey had no recollection of it. Yeah. Doesn't recall. She had to tell me all about it. <laughs> I, I'm still kind which of Which means, myself. which means you were kind of blacked out I, for a certain exactly. portion of the night there. Right. Yeah. And you were, but you were by yourself. Isn't that a little dangerous? A little Who dangerous, knows what else scary. he could have done. Not yeah. that you were driving or anything. You were in Vegas when there's no need to drive really anywhere. But uh, the, the, still fact, the fact still is that you were uh, with hours or at least moments unaccounted for. And you were by yourself. That could be dangerous. You could have got your pocket pick. You could have gotten who knows. And not me. You, I mean, that's You not... could have gotten violated. Wow. Oh, someone stole my cigarette. That sucks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've never blacked out before from drinking. So you could have woken up with terrifying. half a kidney. Oh. Could have woken up with Paris Hilton, sounds like. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Anything is possible when you black out in Vegas. She came up to you. You said hello. You guys hugged. And you still have no memory of it to this day. To this day, I cannot have I mean, any recollection. She said you had a big, goofy smile on your face. <laughs> so we know it was him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And re really, we don't even know if maybe Paris saw him in the crowd. And she knows who you are. She worked with you for a good year. You worked together, like, uh, uh, for a, at least uh, almost a year. Oh, yeah. You could have gotten Paris's number for all you know. Uh, yeah. Maybe he had sex with her. Maybe I do. Maybe, maybe she I couldn't just resist the horn room glasses. You just can't <laughs> find that everywhere these days. <laughs> Come on, horn room. I'll look up horn room glasses. <laughs> <laughs> what? Galoshes? No, it's not galoshes. <laughs> it's it. Horn room. Tough to look it up when you can't spell it. Glasses, yes. That, to me, <laughs> is fascinating. I know. What was Pasty doing? Oh, yeah, you were at... Blues, the Blues Group. You were, staying, you were staying at the Venetian that uh, that time in Vegas. Right, right. How could you not be certain that Tao was in the, the Venetian? <laughs> How could you be you certain? You were so drunk, dude. <laughs> it's, we've, been, we've, we've visited there a couple different times last couple months, so it seems like we were going to a different club every time. So they all, They're all the same. He was doing the Blue Man <laughs> Group or whatever. Ugh. Oh, well, I'm not doing them, but oh, you know, God, what's your mind them. Yeah, Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> he remembers that. Mm -hmm. Oh, are they blue? Da 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 dee da da dee. Oh, and I call them the, the blue ball group. Mm -hmm. All right, well there it is. Paris Hilton and Serena Williams celibate and fighting it out to oh, the yeah. to the victor. We'll go the spoils. I guess so. Well, I mean, I wonder what the the end of the you know what. It looks like it was spoiled in here. Whoa! What's it? Now? You know what the prize is? What the, the prize is for the bet? Well, just like in trading places back in the day, Terry. One dollar. <laughs> <laughs> Over don't... the bathroom stall. Mm -hmm, <laughs> That's mm -hmm. great. <laughs> oh, Mortimer. <laughs> oh, thank you, Terry. What an impression. Okay. 1,083, boy. Let me tell you. <laughs> Terry's so dead on with her impressions. <laughs> I felt like I was watching the movie. <laughs> oh, it's very interesting, Terry. Oh, jeez. A little bit surprising that Serena and Paris have gotten close like that and are yeah. so chummy chummy now they're making little friendly waiters. Yeah, that is kind of surprising. Mm -hmm. Wait, Dave can join the group. Maybe we can all play tennis together. Oh. Be special. Yes.
Yeah, Stephen, right there with him. What else? What else is happening, Terrence? What else, uh, Just to let you know that uh, Nicole Richie is really being tired of co- being called skinny. Apparently, she told Us Weekly, you know, don't, you don't scream at people that they are overweight. So what makes people think that they have the right to scream at me for being so damn skinny? Right, I didn't catch any of that. But uh, she's just, cla- you know, I, she- I noticed that on the phone lines, Terry, the question was asked and still at this moment left with a little bit of confusion as to whether you could have fle- freckles on your junk. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Joe is waiting on the line to tell us and admit to us that he, in fact, is a possessor of a uh, a situation with freckles all over it, Terry. Whoa. Really? Is that correct, Joe? That is correct, Key. So not only is it possible, but you're staring at one right now. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How many freckles do you ever get, like, a moment of your life where you just felt like you needed to count them or no? Uh, yeah, actually I have, and it's it's quite impossible. There's too many. There's too many to count, even though it's a small situation like that. Oh, uh, it, it ain't that small. Oh, it's a freckly monster. <laughs> <laughs> the freckly monster. I tried connecting the dots before, and that takes too long. So. Okay. So. All right, now you're just calling to have a moment on the air with us, or you're telling us a true story? No, it's a true story. And how sure. has the reaction been over the years um, to your freckled situation? Well, I used to be insecure by it, but then I kind of realized You've that you've uh, worked with it now. It works yeah. with you. You oh, work yeah. with it. It's it's become oh, yeah. it's become an accessory as opposed to a a problem. Right. Uh huh. No, no, I never had no women complain about it. So. Really? Yeah. Wow. When if only you can. Out, if only you were a mind reader. Yeah, when you're handing out O faces, they ain't gonna complain. All right. Mm hmm. It's <laughs> loving it. Yeah. So Terry said if she's seen one, she might get scared. I don't know about that. Um, well, I didn't really say that. I just said was, I never. Oh, Stephen. Yeah, <laughs> I just said I've never seen one. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, it, it's possible. But it goes without saying that if you saw one, you might get scared, Terry. Yeah, I, I might. All right. What if he gives you the old face? All right, first call. It. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, all right. Well, thanks for the report then. All right, no problem. Yes, Joe. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's good to know that they're out there. <laughs> mm. You gotta redo your checklist, Terry. I guess so. <laughs> the Kate Hudson Chris Robinson breakup news is still fresh, and Kate is reportedly already moving on. So it is. Owen Wilson. Owen! Oh, I can explain. According to Us Weekly. They fell in love on the set of Me, You, and Dupree, Terry. Or sounds you and me and like, Dupree. Yeah, sounds like it. Whichever you'd rather see. Uh, wow. Owen Wilson broke up. Kate Hudson and her black crow husband, Terry. Yeah, supposedly. Mm-hmm. She couldn't resist. The old man. Yeah. <laughs> He's kind of cute. Well, those Wilson brothers, man, there. Well, I'll tell you this. Yeah, he I makes know. he makes more sense being with her than the black crow thing, I'll tell you that. Because uh, what is Owen Wilson, about 33 years old? Mm, a little older. older. A little older than that? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Not much. How old do you say she is? She is or he is? He is. 37. 37? He's an old man. Oh, jeez. I'm going 36. I think his first movie was like 93 or something. I'm going to go 34 and not look back. Wow. Okay. okay. Well, and the answer is? Uh-oh. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Steven? Oh, wow. Hot wow. Hot Chisel nailed it, didn't he? Wow. Uh, November 18th, 1968. That makes him exactly... Th- 37 years old. Wow. It's going to be 38 in a couple months. I'm part of the fan club, you know. They, they, they send out newsletters every month. Ah, uh, in the county. You seem to know Owen Wilson quite That's well. Right. Big fan. So she does like older guys. That yeah. is oh. obvious. Yeah. But this she one, does. a little less old than her husband was, Terry. Her husband was about 15 years old than her. Owen Wilson, about 10 years old than her. Yeah. And Owen Wilson, good for a laugh. Yeah. Unlike the Black Crows singer, I'm sure she was sitting around just... Just... Nothing uh, ever funny happening. Yeah, he didn't no. seem like he had a good sense of humor yeah. at all. The Kate like Hudson, Chris Robinson breakup. What's that, Stephen? I thought they, I, I thought they were gonna, the kids were gonna make it. Oh jeez, I liked them together. Mm-hmm. The Kate Hudson, Chris Robinson breakup news is still fresh, and Kate is reportedly already moving on with Owen Wilson. Oh. <laughs> I can explain. According to Us Weekly, the You, Me, and Dupree co-stars have been spotted this summer hanging out at several L.A. hotspots, and Kate has spent more than a few nights at Owen's Santa Monica home. Wow. Now, Owen Wilson's little bits of uh, attraction a woman may have towards him doesn't end with his ability to make you laugh, Terry. Right. Now, uh, you may or may not recall 
there was a story in the New York Post mm -hmm. about a year ago. And uh, maybe you saw this, maybe you didn't. I don't know if we discussed it. But there was a story in the New York Post that Owen Wilson took a woman back to a hotel room, so she claimed. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how to phrase this, that it could actually be a part of the family show here. Uh, I'll just give it a, a shot here. <laughs> According to her accounts of what happened in that hotel room, Terry, mm -hmm. how you say... Something weird's coming. <laughs> I know. I hate it when he does this. <laughs> he licked her butt for two straight hours. Oh, what? Oh, man. <laughs> I guess there's no way we're just coming right out with it. So yeah, that's his can't. specialty. You don't remember that? <laughs> his specialty, yeah. You don't remember that story? No, I don't. I'm Whoa. telling you. I, I, I would have remembered that. I'm not, no. I think that's memorable. I'm not making this up. Wow, two hours? This was about a year ago, the New York Post. There was a woman who claimed that Owen Wilson took her back to his hotel. Wow. And pretty much all they did, and this is a man with a lot of patience, I'll tell you that. Because, I mean, yeah, maybe this kind of activity has its time and place, but for two hours straight, two minutes is all it takes. Wow. Wow. He's a if heiny lover? He's a heiny lover. <laughs> Terry, actually, they came up with a nickname. I'm not making this up either. They call him the Butterscotch, the Butterscotch Stallion. Oh, jeez. No one's ever heard of this. No. Not that story, no. Well, I, I didn't, no. The Butterscotch Stallion. Two wow. hours? That's the name he got due to the accounts of this woman's story. Uh, that was the end result. Oh, jeez. Of <laughs> that little tail. Well, I'm wow. throwing away my little bottle of butterscotch when I get home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just giving you a note. You love it. No wonder you have such a crooked nose that Owen Wilson, huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Two straight hours? Whoa. Are you kidding me? Man. I mean, what is she doing the whole time? Hmm, <laughs> reading TV guy? I guess. I mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, but even... Even you if can't only Terry's, love Terry, it for Yeah, Terry's right? about to say, even if you're loving it, two straight hours gets a little mundane. Let's, I mean, gets really? a, little, a little overkill. Yeah, wouldn't it? When you look at your watch, you're like, oh, jeez. Can you we, go we, somewhere else? We've been here for <laughs> for an hour and ten minutes. How much longer can this guy go? Yeah. Not even close. Wow. Not even close to being done. Jeez. Not even close. What, what, uh, what is, <laughs> oh, what's the fascination with the Heine? Uh, Terry, uh, you'd have to ask Owen Wilson or Kate Hudson. <laughs> yeah, I mean. I wonder. Loves it. He's the butterscotch stallion. I'm not. Right. Never desire to, uh, to unseat <laughs> the butterscotch <laughs> stallion from his perch. I guess not. Uh -huh. yeah, that is definitely uh. interesting. Wow. Stay with the longest you've got is? Whoa. <laughs> Uh, none. Never. Not Zero. a second. No. Oh. Not a second straight. Not a second straight. No. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't even venture there? No. That's basically what he's saying. Oh, Whoa. He is the butterscotch on stallion. <laughs> the non-butterscotch on a stallion. But he likes fudge. Yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> but caramel. Oh, oh, Terry. Come on. Let's just please oh. gross me out. This is a true story, though. Look it up. You somewhere I, you'll find I've it. I googled it. I found it. You, you know. found Did the story. You really? See, this, see. You thought uh, I was making it up. You looked at me like I was crazy. Well, just because it sounds so. What? It, oh jeez. Well, I just typed in butterscotch stallion, <laughs> and there's a whole bunch of things, and they all reference Owen Wilson. Mm -hmm. I didn't really open anything up because I'm afraid to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Steven's afraid he'll get a call from the IT guy if he opens it up. <laughs> I know. That's oh, you're work. you're one too. <laughs> Whoa! I will get a little smiley face email. A good one. <laughs> Uh, Thanks for reading my blog. Whoa. That Come is on. very interesting. Now that we're on the subject, Stephen, you certainly have it within the right to uh, open up the story and find out what it says there about okay, the sorry. Butterscotch Stallion. Isn't that the craziest nickname ever? Yeah. <laughs> He's a Butterscotch Stallion. Mm -mm. Two hours straight, according to this woman's little story about her sexcapade with Owen Wilson. You think Kate Hudson can resist that? <laughs> Well, I, I remember. Who could? Uh, well, Just two I, hours. Did, I did see her in an God. interview, and this was. Terry's saying very undesirable. Yeah. yeah. No. Terry's not signing up. Not. Really? What's the longest you'd sign up for, Terry? Not. That, that <laughs> ten is, minutes? Not oh, come on, you're signing up for ten minutes. No, no, That's no. That's not for ten minutes? No, no. Come on! I'm with Stephen on the whole How thing. How many minutes? Zero minutes. You're not signing up for a minute? No. I don't get oh. it. I don't. Well, that's why. Mm -hmm. Well, no, and I don't <laughs> want it either. I mean, how many minutes are you guys giving your wives? Well, uh. Oh, wives? Uh. <laughs> wives? Never thought about doing it to my wife. Oh, what?
Yeah, butterscotch is something you save for, you know, no, a couple of hoe train girls. Uh, Whoa! Back in the day. Yeah. Uh, what was that? Uh, stay with what? During your spree. Yeah, something you save for other people. Uh-huh. They're just referring to him as it. I'm trying to find the, the story, but I can't imagine. I mean, I believe your story if they're referring to him as that. Yes. I mean, Terry, my wife, that's that's the butt she kisses my son with. Come on. Uh... <laughs> Oh, that's the line they always give. Anyway, ah, uh, yeah. So that's that's that. That is interesting. And well, now, I, I know that I saw her in an interview, oh, an older interview, talking about relationships and stuff, and and she says that you know when it when your relationships relationship gets old and stale and you're not having fun anymore, then it's time to like move on. Two hours talk about old and stale. <laughs> oh, man. So mm-hmm. I don't know if it was you know she knew that her and. Her, her husband were in trouble already? Or well, what? I'll tell you this. If I'm whatever Robinson, what's his name Chris. from the, the Black Crows? If I'm him mm-hmm. and I knew anything about Owen Wilson's reputation as far as being the butterscotch stallion, <laughs> you thinking I'm letting my wife taking this job to shoot me, you, me, and Dupree? <laughs> well, I well, would assume that she would be faithful. Well, yeah, and well, I don't think she's... You can't be faithful when you're in the throes in the midst of the butterscotch stallion. But I thought they had an open marriage anyway. Oh, all right. So... Whatever. Not that open. <laughs> oh, only open on his side? That's, that's open wide. Yeah, yeah that's oh. a little too personal. Mm-hmm. Okay. That smile big. <laughs> open. Okay. So it only applies to one side. So you, oh, geez. Yeah, well, yeah, the butterscotch style, no, my friends I mean, would only apply to one side. No, now, I'm talking about him. Can you, can you visualize... Kate picking up where the woman in the hotel left off with the butterscotch stallion no. and, and then loving the fact that she's leaving her husband for this? No, I, I really it. can't. While, while <laughs> at the same time, he's telling her jokes. <laughs> oh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> Two in a row, boy. <laughs> well. No. Mm-hmm. What have you found, Stephen? You're doing a lot of research up there. It sounds like you're getting all quiet. You all right? Well, there was a little interview with him in page six. He says, have you heard the nickname that people have created for you? And he says, well, what is it? They say, of course, the butterscotch stallion goes, oh, I did hear that. I love that. It's so funny. So, mm-hmm. But that's all I'm finding so far. The butterscotch stallion. It is not just a fling. <laughs> oh, it's not just a fling. We all know how well Wilson played a wedding crasher, but Us Weekly senior editor Caroline Schaefer says Owen turned marriage crasher in June after filming Wrapped on Dupree. They were all over the world. They were in Australia. They were in America. They were staying in hotel rooms together. They became very good friends, and that developed into a romance. On The View in July, Kate admitted there were a few crushes on the Dupree set. Both Matt Dillon and Owen Wilson have said they had crushes on Both Matt Dillon. Say, I mean, I'm a massive butterscotch stallion. Now, Terry, <laughs> you say that you're not turned on at all by the butterscotch stallion okay. reference, and you know what that reference entails. Yes. I've made it pretty clear to you. There's no yes. secret anymore. Are you sure that that's the truth as far as within your being through and through, Terry, and there's not a place deep inside that, even though you're not saying it outwardly, is a bit turned on by the fact that Owen Wilson has been named the Butterscotch Stallion because of the fact that he was able to put forth two straight hours (laughs) of that activity? Are you sure that doesn't do anything for you whatsoever? Here, give me some thinking music and let me think about it. If you were to run into, let's say, Owen Wilson, let's say all of a sudden, there you are, dining at the Met. And you look over at a table nearby and there's Owen Wilson. Uh You don't get a little tingly knowing that you are this far away from the Butterscotch Stallion? Hmm... Deep inside, maybe? Oh, look, you want me to go deep inside? Yeah, look layers within yourself, Hold Terry. On. I'm curious. I really want to know if this does anything for you. <laughs> yeah, you know, at one point during the two hours, you had, oh, you had to hear that. Okay. Yeah, going two hours without that, boy. <laughs> Okay, turn the music off because already just with this whole banter right here. Not for, girls don't do that. So yeah, okay, that's, that's a good point. All right, go ahead. What's your? No, I have no interest, no desire, no turn on, no nothing. It's not a fiber in not your a, soul or being, Terry, that's turned on by that even to some small degree that you're not, not even, telling us about. No, no. Do you think you represent the average woman 
hearing that Owen Wilson did what he did, that that does nothing for you, it doesn't the turn you on woman? at all? Yeah. Yes, I think I do. You represent the average yes. woman? Yes, I the, do, the average saying, woman. You're saying the average woman is not turned on by a man who, is, who has been documented, known for doing such an activity. Yes. For two straight hours. Yes. I re- yes. And that's the key. He was able to do it for two straight right. hours without getting tired or, wow. or bored yeah, or, disinterested. or disinterested. Not even getting water or anything? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Lips are all chapped. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he fell off his bike on the way to school. No, oh, he's I, dipping into the Carmex, I'm sure. I, did. I oh, wondered. Wow. No, you do, do straight hours. You can't break for the Carmex. It ruins your straight. you got to start over at one. No. So, yeah, I think I'm, I'm like the average woman. I, I don't. The average woman is not turned on by is that. Is not turned on by it. one 663 t man Jerry believes that she is speaking for the average woman after learning about <laughs> this hotel situation. Between Owen Wilson and a woman who is more than willing to talk about it, she is not turned on at all by that aspect of Owen Wilson that the average man, I don't think, is capable of doing, Terry. (laughs) That's why he's the Butterscotch Stallion. (laughs) Yeah, I guess so. So, But you're not turned on by the fact that he has that special, unique talent. Yeah, if that's his specialty, I I could care less. And the average woman feels the same way you do, you feel. The average woman, Mm -hmm. yes. Let's find out if that's the case. See, what, what's going to happen is, you know, I'm going to get slaughtered here because people don't is, listen to me uh, saying the average woman. Mm-hmm. But they just, so when you pose the question, is it from Owen Wilson or is it from their husband? You know, it's from no, a big I'm, difference. Well, You're probably going to let Owen do that before you let some <laughs> random guy do that. But just... Does it turn you on about Owen Wilson? We're speaking specifically about him okay. because there's no other person that has been documented as being the uh, Butterscotch Stallion. I don't want to hear from a bunch of guys right now saying, oh, I broke his record. I don't want to hear that. Right, right. Because I don't think anyone has broken his record. <laughs> He's like Kenny G. You can hold that two-hour note. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't need to come up for, for breath. Exactly. <laughs> so let's go to the phones and see how much <laughs> Terry knows about the great. average woman. <laughs> Chris, you're on the air. Hello? Yes. I agree with Terry. That's nasty to you, or it doesn't nasty. do... Nasty. It, it, you go as far as to saying nasty, or it, ju- or it just doesn't do anything for me, T-Man. Which is it? It's nasty. It's nasty. Two hours? And, and it's both. I it can be I'd be both. a little dry by then. All right, when is... Oh, jeez. When does it... Uh, when does it reach the point of nasty? At what, what moment? Uh, Probably after about... 35, 40 minutes. <laughs> 35, 40 minutes. Oh, to so me, that she's sounds willing like to do it. So she's willing to do it. Sounds like it, Terry. Yeah. But see, I, I'm two saying... Two hours. Yeah, I'm saying that. Come on, let's go get a sandwich or something. Oh, jeez. Mmm. <laughs> yeah, not not attractive to me. Sarah! Yes? Turned on at all by this or no? Oh, yeah. Oh, there you go. Oh yeah. You're just gonna oh, now you're gonna, two hours? You're gonna retort yeah. by saying she's just a freak, Terry, and she doesn't Whoa. represent the average woman. No, see again, that's what I'm saying. The average woman. Sarah, is not do you into consider it. yourself be honest? Do you see yourself as the typical, more average type woman, or are you going to admit that your sexual interests tend to be a little bit further to the freaky side than the average woman? No, I think I'm pretty average. Pretty average, but the yeah, fact that Owen honestly, Wilson yeah. is the Butterscott Stallion is turning you on. It is hot. Oh, geez. Two hours? Yes, absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. <clears throat> My space. <laughs> uh, Sarah, do you have a MySpace account that we could uh, look at or no? Um, sure. Um, are you interested in giving your... Email address over the air, or no, I am not. Okay, no, probably now. Well, if it's not, if you're just a normal woman, then who would care? Yeah, she's see, and I don't believe she'll get a lot of emails from some non-normal guys. Yeah, but see, exactly. I don't think she's the no, average. No, those are normal guys. Uh, oh yeah, speaking by of the way. non-normal guys, why don't you pick her up, get her private there information, and see what uh, kind of pictures are accompanying her MySpace account. She's not the average woman. No. There she said she was. Why are you calling her a liar? I'm not saying that she's a liar, but she I She just doesn't know any better yeah, as far as I, what the average woman right, is? Right, right. Right. Mm-hmm. I can't imagine anybody wanting that for two hours. Uh, Tiffany! Yes. Yes, Tiffany. Too much. I agree with Terry. I think it is disgusting. Oh, jeez. For any minutes. For, for you, any minute. You, would, you wouldn't want any guy to do that to you. Oh, you wouldn't want Owen Wilson. You wouldn't want any guy whatsoever to do that to you for even 30 seconds. Oh, no. I mean, there are plenty other things he could be doing than licking my butt. All right. Oh, geez. Geez. <laughs> so well, subtle. Well, gosh, how do you... Is that I what mean... that is? Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I was only hoping we didn't have to say it once, Terry. Okay. <laughs> yeah. but, but I guess we can't dodge it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
Mm. <laughs> Pasty, what's the problem? Yeah, she took about a minute there, and she sounded like she was trying to fumble and find her email address for the uh, email she used to set up her MySpace account, and yes. then just, oh, oh I, I got, I got to go, Pasty. Oh, bye, bye, and just hung up. Great impersonation, I'm sure, Terry. <laughs> I mean, Pasty. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so she didn't want us to see her MySpace. I guess not. All right. Maybe she's lying. Lying about what? She doesn't really exist. <laughs> no, she doesn't really, uh, you know, like that. She sounded like she was telling the truth. No, I think she likes that. I think if, if she's going to lie about anything, it's the average part. I think she's probably a I little bit I think maybe more. she's afraid that we wouldn't uh, appreciate her pictures. Oh. I think that's what it just comes down to. I don't mm. know why you guys can't see what's I, staring I you in the face. Let me believe. <laughs> Let me believe. <laughs> Let me believe. <laughs> and the, re the reality is, no matter what she looks like, she obviously has some redeeming character characteristics <laughs> right. that we'd be willing to let a lot slide. I guess so, huh? Slide. Ooh. Chanel! Good morning, Chanel. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. What can we do for you this morning? We're trying to figure out what the average woman is feeling. I agree with Terry. Mm -hmm. Definitely. You agree that you wouldn't want it for two straight hours? You wouldn't want it for even two minutes? Where do you fall in there, baby? Maybe 30 seconds. <laughs> 30 seconds? Mm -hmm. If you're going to go 30 seconds, hours. you might as well go five minutes. Why? No, right? not even five minutes. Terry, I, I speak for all women while representing all men, and right. I will now tell you the appropriate amount of time to uh, make like a butterscotch stallion. <laughs> and that is... Okay, hold on. Let me write it down in my book. <laughs> anywhere from five to eight minutes. Really? Mm-hmm. Hmm. All right. All right, four to seven. <laughs> How about three six? <laughs> and you must be fully showered. For there can't have been even an hour that has elapsed since your last shower. Okay. Pretty sure that goes without saying, though, right? When attempting to do that. Well, I just got off the treadmill. Come here. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not happening. Yes. Or even worse than the treadmill. Some newer clothing that is uh, more apt to shed. Anyhow, uh, or newer underwear. Anyway, uh, or if not wearing. Wow. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yes. All right. Got it. So, there's the keys. Had to have showered uh -huh. no more than just about an hour or less. Right. And uh, two, to, two, to, two to five minutes. <laughs> one, one to four. <laughs> Keep Never! Never. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what are you, gay? No, five to eight minutes is your appropriate amount of time. No less than five. No more than eight. I think it's sad that people are closed-minded like Stephen. I won't even entertain the idea. And Stephen, if you are not entertaining, if you're in love as <laughs> it seems you are, you should be both on the giving and receiving end of that. And receiving. What? End. What exactly is the turn on? <laughs> Very love. I mean, what? Receive. What is? What? What? What is so? Ooh, but if, but gosh. if neither of us are into it, then why should Terry, we do it? Maybe you'll find out it does nothing for you, but you'll never know until. So, you have been on either the giving or receiving end. So, uh, can I assume that you guys have, both of you two have either been on the giving or receiving end? Yes, I'm correct. Okay, so again, <laughs> so you guys can talk about experience, What yes. what is the big thrill? What's the big Dad, thrill? I wouldn't say it was this, this major rush and or thrill for me, but I certainly... Uh, it tickled I, your fancy somehow. Oh, jeez. <laughs> So why don't Literally you go suck a guy, then? I mean, uh, you know, you're not going to tell you try it, right? Oh, jeez. Well, I mean, we're not, if, you're, if you're using that theory, <laughs> well, it's kind of gay. To sounds like it's all the oh. same to you, though. Well, this is kind of gay. See, there's a meaning. Men don't do anything for me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> all right. Well, I don't think they do anything for me either, but I'm okay. not going to tell you try it. I, I mean, if you're exactly going to use that where theory. You're going. Yeah, I, well, then that would be the case with all sexual activities, then, right. if you were going by your philosophy. That's yeah, your, your philosophy. You're, your the philosophy. One that, you're the one that brought it up. Okay, yeah, that's right. I said it, not you. You're the one that said. <laughs> of course you are. <laughs> I prefaced it by saying if, it's, if you're in love as you claim you are. Didn't I say that? Well, in Okay, are you in love with uh, men as much as you're in love with your wife, Amy? I am not. Okay, well, didn't I make it clear that that was the way I phrased it? But but your don't knock it until you try it thing has to do with this, and you guys don't right. necessarily do this David, with your wives. Out, it was go before out, do whatever you want. <laughs> All right, you now have full clearance. You feel better? Okay, good. The conversation. <laughs> We 
are learning more about the woman who caused a transatlantic flight to be diverted. Two fighter jets were scrambled today trying to escort a United flight to Boston where it made an emergency landing. Right. It is the first problem on board a plane headed for the U.S. from Britain since last week's terror arrest. Mm -hmm. United says the 60-year-old woman started her journey on a flight to Dubai and then on the flight from London to Washington, D.C., passengers say she became agitated. Oh, jeez. She was acting in a very... Is that what you need these days on a plane, Terry? A woman just to go nuts? She was acting in a very, very odd way. Um, starting to get a bit strange with everybody. She seemed to want everybody's attention all the time, including the, the pilot and the co-pilot. Mm -hmm. Authorities say the woman suffered a panic attack. They say it was not a case of terrorism. No, mm. but that's got to be... Could there be a more scary feeling in the world these days than being on a plane and looking to your left and looking to your right and there are two fighter jets on either side, Terry? I know. Mm -hmm. Can there be a scarier feeling that one could feel these days knowing you're one trigger pull away from just being blown a smithereens? Probably not. And if given the orders, they'll do it with, with glee because they know they're... Let's say it was a terrorist on board. They know they're saving thousands of people at the expense of 200 people on the plane. I know. They'll be heroes for shooting you down. Jeez. You are expendable. You are expendable in that situation. But can there be a scarier feeling than being on a plane and seeing fire jets scramble to it? I know. I don't think there's <laughs> anything that's scarier these days. No. I can't think of anything. I'd be like, land this bitch now. Oh. I don't care where we are. <laughs> and the lady... Just cracked up, yeah. and they scramble the fire jets. I mean, you're on the plane. You're like, she's not a terrorist. <laughs> and you hold her face to the window. Look, she's white. Right. <laughs> Damn, it's she's just nuts. <laughs> or just throw her out and have it. And you're Take her now. You're pressing her face to the window. <laughs> look at her. Does that look like a terrorist to you? She's got gray hair. Right. <laughs> Man, uh, you'll do anything to save your life in that situation. Um, yeah. Gosh. <laughs> uh -huh. Her name is Pearl Smith. <laughs> You'll do anything. Right. Save your own life with those fighter planes on each side of your of your plane. Mm -hmm. And as it turned out, this lady wasn't a terrorist. She just went nuts. And the fly the fighter planes were there, ready to act when given the orders to. Not a fun afternoon. Yeah. Scary. Uh -huh. Mm-hmm. Sixty year old woman just went crazy. Yeah. Had a panic attack, and now she's going to be held accountable for it. Almost to some degree, one can s perhaps build a case of sympathy for her. Yeah. She just yeah. kind of had say. a kind of had a panic filled moment, snapped a bit, and now is going to be held on charges because she can't have panic attacks on planes, no matter what the medical reason may be for it. Yeah, I know. Can't that's, have it happen. Yeah. It's the law. It's against the law. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that is kind of weird because you would. Th I mean, it's not like she did it on purpose. No it sympathy. Was just like, hey, sorry. Trust me, the passenger on the plane, the passengers have no sympathy. Lock her up for life. She almost scared <laughs> yeah. me. To it's not authorities like she was using toothpaste or something. I mean, come on. Mm -hmm. Authorities say the woman suffered a panic attack. They say it was not a case of terrorism. She will likely face federal criminal charges. Mm -hmm. Criminal charges. Wow. Well, that's the way it is. I guess so. You better be balanced if you're getting on a plane. You better not have any mental issues. Especially if you're flying to Dubai, which is not the closest thing in the world. Not <laughs> a, qu a quick little jog down the street. Cut your teeth on a two-hour flight and see how you do there first. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> Take a little trip to Portland. Yeah. Right. See how you do. Come on. Uh, Dubai. Jeez. Yeah, Seattle to Portland may be the run you want to test it out on. <laughs> yeah. See if you're mentally capable of flying these days. Yeah, build up. <laughs> Man, fighter jets scramble to the, to the airspace where the plane was. Mm. Oh, little goodness. red targets on people's foreheads like throughout the plane. <laughs> oh, boy. Here we go. A little beams of red light coming. Oh, man. We're coming, locked. <laughs> coming into the window. Hey, can you get that off the movie screen, please? <laughs> nice. Oh, Not good. boy. Not good is the understatement of the day. What else is going on, Terry? Well, I have more airplane-related airplane news for you. Sure. According to the new travel restrictions, ladies, your gel-padded bra could keep you off the plane. Well, we'll be a lot Fly a lot of flat-chested passengers, huh? <laughs> I guess so. Mm -hmm. Apparently, this is because, you know, of the whole terrorist thing. Yes. Uh, in Your the, bra can be an explodable device. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. no gels on planes. Yeah. Oh, they it's were, a new world. Yeah, the terrorists, according to the plot, were the women were going to, you know, smuggle the explosives in their bras. and Wow. Like mm-hmm. In the gel part. So, so now don't the, get them. <laughs> more of the reason to become an airport screener than ever. you got to feel women's bras up. I guess so. <laughs> what do you think, Tom? Is this a gel-filled bra? What's your take on this? 
<laughs> oh, got to take it off. I better take her to the back room. <laughs> yeah, it's strip search. Wow. <laughs> So, yeah. Okay. Also, yes. still in the uh, airline thing. By the way, the Sarah pasty that you called out for being a woman unwilling to give us her MySpace. You know, the woman who called in the last segment to her that you uh, consider to be a sexual freak because she answered in the affirmative of yes. uh, wanting to be in the presence and being turned on by the Butterscotch Stallion. Uh, she's back on the line, more oh. than willing to give us her MySpace information. Oh. Isn't that right, Sarah? I did, yes, I did. Oh, you already did? Pasty has it already? Yeah, I gave it to him. Oh, I bet you did. <laughs> okay. So you were probably a little bit annoyed or a little bit uh, pissed that he said that you were conveniently cut off, suggesting that you did it purposefully, right, or I mean, no? No, believe it or not, he did a pretty accurate description of what I did. I had to fumble a bit. I was at work, so I had to go. <laughs> mm, what do you do? Um, I work at a hotel in Seattle. Really? Wow, convenient. A little bad girl. <laughs> and what do you do at the hotel? Mm, I'm not going to say. Ah, oh, you don't have Sorry. to. Sorry. Customer service. <laughs> well, do yeah. you have on a standard uniform or do you get to pick out your own clothing? I get to wear what I want. Really? And what have you chosen this morning? Um, actually completely boring. Sorry. Um, just a, a, a black skirt and then I have a little pink shirt on over the top of that. What so makes you think that's boring? <laughs> well, maybe not to you. I couldn't be more entertained. <laughs> right. <laughs> and you're a married woman or no? No, I am yeah. not. Yeah. And how old are you? Um, I'm 26. 26. Hmm. She's pride. <laughs> Perfect. I've been in a relationship for five years, so sorry. You're in one now? I am. Well, obviously, it uh, can't be all uh, poodles and ice cream if you're just, <laughs> if you're just adoring and loving the aspect of uh, Owen Wilson that has been highlighted this morning. Aspect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of him being the, quote, unquote, a butterscotch a stallion. Well, you can be in a relationship and be completely turned on by something else. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, hold on, hold on. Let me get my wife on the line. What's that? <laughs> Repeat that, please. Would your boyfriend be okay learning that you have come on the air this morning talking about how you're completely filled with admiration for Owen Wilson's hotel escapades? I don't think he'd care at all. What if Owen Wilson were to check in? You work at a hotel. It wouldn't be the strangest thing in the world that that it happened. What if he What if he checks in your hotel there today? That might be interesting. Mm -hmm. What if he requests <laughs> you to deliver his room service? Uh, he wouldn't do that. <laughs> if he did, though, what if he requested you? Would you do it or no? no I want that I'm girl. Faithful in. Woman. Sorry. You're a faithful woman. I am. All right, now you are boring. All right. I'm sorry. Yeah, whatever. Thanks for the call. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, whatever. Have we gotten the pictures? Do we know? My uh, Pasty has her pictures. Oh. Keeping them all to himself. Keeping them all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not giving those up or what? I got them. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> well, then stand back. The T-Man. Corn Robinson run out of Seattle because of alcohol abuse problems. Oh, it is. It's resurfaced once again. The former Seahawk released from jail mm -hmm. on a $50,000 bail. Oh, boy. Robinson arrested last night at 1045 near the Vikings training camp. That's the team he plays for now. He was caught on a radar going 100 miles an hour in a 55 mile an hour zone. Right. Refused to pull over. Yeah, why would you, you do that? The mugshot. <laughs> Robinson, whose alcohol problems in the past here in Seattle, blood alcohol content of 0.11%, charged with fleeing police, felony, t two DWI charges, okay. and three other misdemeanors. Yeah, 0.11%, not the highest ever on record, Terry, as right, you know. Right, right. But when it's like your fifth or sixth DUI and you're on your last chance in the NFL, basically, as far as cleaning up your act, mm -hmm. not good. Right. <laughs> Here were the Minnesota Vikings, unlike Holmgren, willing to give him a last chance. Mm -hmm. Holmgren, with him, he had run out of chances, and that was justifiable considering all that uh, he had been through out here. Right. But there's that thought of a new scene, new scenery, fresh start, clean up your act, last chance, and that's what the Vikings were giving him. Mm -hmm. And he was drinking and driving again. I just don't understand, especially now that he's blown a $12 million contract, basically. Oh. With the Vikings in that last chance. Oh, yeah, in, in your last chance, wouldn't it all be nice in our last chance if we would get $12 million contracts? Right. He basically has now put that in major jeopardy. Yeah. 
And the thought is, at least if you were thinking somewhat uh, ahead, okay, this is my last chance. I'd really like to get this $12 million. Why don't I just hire a limo when I go out? Yeah. that You know, maybe it gets a little costly, but I can afford it, and I don't want to lose $12 million. Right. Like, like he may have just done, Terry. The hell got I? Especially with Burleson gone, he would have been like their number one guy. Mm-hmm. Not good. Yes. I think we can all agree. <laughs> he can enjoy uh-huh. the Canadian Football League from now on. Oh, wow. <laughs> Him and what? Ricky yeah. Williams? Yeah, the Canadian uh, Football hey. League can get a lot of stars. Right. Yeah. Smoking weed and drinking heavy. Mm, speaking of stars, what was the uh, the ad we just played for uh, that movie, Snakes on a Plane? Yeah. What is that open? Is that open tomorrow? I think so. Yes. Because I still have to see Tally Dig Nights, Terry. Yeah? Yeah. Number one of the box office. And tonight again. could yeah. be a movie. Tomorrow night could be a, a movie night situation. Whoa. Oh, wow. watch out! I got with the wife. I got to pick and choose my movies carefully, oh. Terry. Well, what's the deal with Snakes on the Plane? Because uh, what do you mean? What's the deal? How could the movie be more descriptive as far as its title is concerned? I like the fact that they named this movie Snakes on the Plane. <laughs> you know exactly what you're getting into. So I that's I was going to see a western. What the hell happened here? So that's all. So that's it. Western. It's just snakes on the plane, and I that's all. This was going to be is. a movie about the space shuttle. What's no snakes on a plane? Tells you all you need to know. How much more do you need? Okay, there's snakes on. The, I mean, I just I don't, don't understand why it's such a cool movie. I don't get or, it. What's this movie about? Well, no, I, snakes I, on a plane. No. <laughs> she knows what it's about. No, I know what it's about, but I mean, yes. it doesn't seem like there's much plot. Oh, it can't be good. So they're probably right. going to evade the snakes a lot. Well, honestly, on a plane, you. Honestly, I think this movie started almost as a spoof and. Uh, and it got such a buzz on the internet, they started to, they decided to, uh, to go with it. People were so into the concept of snakes on a plane that not only have they gone with this movie, but they've entitled it just that, Snakes, snakes on, on a plane. plane. And I really think all movies should be named that way, so there's no confusion as to what you're getting into. <laughs> like, okay. let's say they would have named Titanic. Ship gonna go down with two lovers aboard that you may be into if you uh, decide you like them as characters. Yeah, two for that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that sounds good to Steven. <laughs> Snakes on a plane! Some horror flick just say, you know, what? Well, the fact that Samuel L. Jackson signed on for it, it's intriguing. That's mm-hmm. another aspect. Yeah, that's true. Because it's kind of a hokey idea, but the fact that he's in it. Yeah, but like any actor, you don't sign up for only winners. You have a lot of bus that you're a part of in the acting world. Yeah, but it hasn't he already had because, his bus? Just, well, he's had... Those who have had bus tend to have more bus. Oh, it's not okay. like you get your bus out of your system. All right. Mm. <laughs> some quick trivia about the movie. He only signed on because of the title. That's the only That's reason? That's his excuse. It's the only reason to go to the movie. <laughs> and, he, and he said it was changed to a different title, but then he demanded they reverse it back to Snakes on a Plane. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's his excuse. Yeah, I think that's the deal. They, that, that title was almost like a spoof. Oh, they, really? They were joking around that they were going to call it Snakes on a Plane. But once that got around and it got a little buzz on the Internet, then it became a reality. Yeah, let's call this movie Snakes on a Plane. And I hope it starts a new trend. I love the little commercials. They just show the snakes biting everybody. And I'm yeah! like, okay, there you go. I've seen the movie. Oh, so they bite everybody? This is what I paid for <laughs> when I bought Snakes on a Plane? <laughs> they already have snakes on a train. Mm. <laughs> Hopefully they kill him in the first five minutes and the plane's just there flying. I know. I mean. That'll be quality entertainment. So that opens tomorrow, too? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what else is going on in the world, Terry? I have VIP passes to give away to oh. Emerald Downs. Sex in a suite. <laughs> wow. There you go. There you go. I'm going. We're all in. That's right. <laughs> uh, Terry sounds like she's fully uh, on a board. When snakes run in a train. Mm-hmm. Snake. <laughs> In my pants. Oh, dear. Whoa. Uh, a pair of VIP tickets to Emerald Downs. The VIP tent is being uh, brought to you by pepsi Acola. Maybe you've heard of them, Terry. Yes. It says here, Eric Flowers, Shellard Hart, and the T-Man crew. Are you kidding me? Jeez. We're will be like, hosting really? <laughs> a VIP tent and $50 chip giveaways and more on August 25th at Emerald Downs. How many chips? That's a lot. Listen for your chance to win exclusive tickets that can only be won here on Q by 90, a 3. How do I know that? It says it right here on the cup. All right, then. You can turn that $50 wagering chip into millions Woo-hoo! when that 99 to 1 horse comes rumbling on it. Sure. Oh, that'd be great. Mm-hmm. All right. Long shot at the track. <laughs> they do 99 to 1 ever? That's as high as it goes, 99 but to 1. Do yes. they ever do it? What do you mean, do they do it? 
I mean, it can be done, yes. Not yeah. every race has a 99-to-1 right. shot. Wondering. How often do you see it? Very rarely okay. do you see a 99-to-1 horse available to be bet on in a particular race. Okay. And I don't know if there's ever been... Well, actually, I'll change that. There certainly has to have been a 99-to-1 horse that has run a number of downs. Mm-hmm. But you need a lot of horses in a particular race for there to be a 99-to-1 shot. Four horses. Not going to be a 99-to-1 shot. Not going to happen. Okay, I didn't think so. <laughs> Not unless it has two legs. Okay. Oh. <laughs> and then it'd probably be about 90-to-1. Okay. <laughs> There's a chance. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but that's where it stops. 99-to-1 could mean that the horse is actually 205-to-1. Yeah. But there is only two sp- little available spots on the tote board, if you will, Terry. Mm-hmm. I know you appreciate a nice tote bag. Oh. We're talking about a tote board here. Okay. So if it goes above 99 to 1, you'll never know it. Mm. Well, you think they'd add another spot. You'd think in the day of modern technology, they would be able to <laughs> nope. put, no ex- for a spot. put exactly what the odds are. But I guess by horse racing tradition, mm-hmm. it doesn't go higher than 99 to 1, maybe in an effort to not embarrass the horse, jockey, trainer, and owner. Oh. Mm. Your horse is so bad, it's 1,004 to 1. Yeah, but 99 isn't embarrassing enough. Now, uh, is your uh, horse going to be running that Friday? Uh, this uh, to be s- determined, Terry. Oh, because you, know, you wanted a special race. Mm-hmm. 6,000 to 1. <laughs> Five bucks on it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Here you go. Ooh, okay, first one, 50 grand. Yes. What else is going on, Terrence? Well, with fantasy football right around the corner. Snakes out of play! <laughs> Just want you to know that uh, it will cost... U.S. businesses eight and a half billion dollars this year. Fantasy football? Yes. I think just in this building alone it'll cost that Terry. I know. We ain't getting any work done. Well, Zero. Done. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna, gonna be work. here longer every day. <laughs> That's true. That. That's oh the way my. to keep us around is have us talk about fantasy football. <laughs> That's right. They say employees working on their fantasy football teams during work hours will cost U.S. businesses that much So this is just the distraction cost that fantasy football uh, brings. Right, lost productivity. Lost productivity because you're so engulfed in your fantasy football needs, Mm -hmm. you uh, divert from your normal job tasks, and it costs U.S. businesses billions? Is that what you're telling me? Eight and a half. Eight and a half billion billion dollars dollars gets lost due to lack of productivity in the workplace. Yep. Mm Mm-hmm. And they're so busy blocking porn sites. I know. <laughs> the next to go are going to be these fantasy football sites that are going to be banned at the workplace. Oh, and my gosh. What are you guys going to do? That's what we all quit. Whoa. <laughs> and they know that. So that's why they keep that's them around. all of corporate America knows. We can't shut down these fantasy football sites. Yeah. They'll, never, they'll never come to work. My, oh, little, my, my little buddy Chris will jump out of a window. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, what's interesting, though, too, you have a little buddy, too? I have a little buddy. You guys all have little buddies, don't you? Steven has a little buddy. Scott. Yes. Mm-hmm. Is your little buddy going to jump out of a window if they block fantasy football sites there, Stephen? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think that about your little boy's guy. Is he in a fantasy football league? I don't Are think you going to be in a fantasy football what? league isn't this he, year, Stephen? Isn't he teaming up with uh, Pacey, or is Pacey solo? I think that's still to be determined, but I, I would love to uh, do what I enjoy. Oh, geez. Oh. That should be my partner a long time ago. Mm-hmm. <laughs> in football and life. Would you Whoa. be my partner? Wow. Are you going to go see Snakes on a Plane with Stephen? I uh, probably won't see that, that film. Hmm. <laughs> But don't you get my point, Terry? Name of the movie, Snakes on a Plane, isn't it beautiful? Well, it You're is. not feeling as though you're walking into well, a romantic comedy, right? I'm right. Yeah. I understand that. It's but, I mean, just me. by seeing the commercials, I think I've seen the whole film, and what's the point? Well, you don't know what kind of personalities these snakes have and what uh, little problems that uh, may yeah. come about. Boy, those cobras having mm-hmm. relationship issues. Okay, uh, Miss uh, Stewardess, there are snakes on the plane, and uh, this bag of peanuts is really small. <laughs> Did I get another? <laughs> right. Mm. No, the snakes are all in the bag of peanut area, and we can't go back there and get you more. Oh, here. wow, you'd be a great story writer. <laughs> Anyhow. Begging the fighter jets to shoot you down. <laughs> hmm. Oh, goodness. Yes. <laughs> goodness is a great way to sum it up. <laughs> what else? What else, Terry? Um, this is kind of an interesting little stat. Why should Pasty have you as part of his fantasy football organization if you don't know anything about football? She's out this year. I'm Austin. out this year. Pasty fired her. But he you were did. more than happy to collect the funds in the previous years. Yeah, but, but that's... Why she got fired. But also, too, Pasty was more than happy to have me give funds. Right. Pasty I mean, should have made problem. you guys take a quiz before he made you a part of your, his fantasy football team. Like, you should be able to tell me who the number one and two and three picks should be in this year's draft, Terry. Who they should be? Yes. As far as fantasy? Yeah, if you were a fantasy football owner, and obviously you're not going to be this year. No. But if you were interested, I would make you answer that question. So just 
for humor's sake, who would you draft number one, two, and three? Well, I can't take Clinton Portis because he's he's hurt. Not ah, number one. That's one thing she read over the past couple of no, days. She's no, gonna no, make it no, like no, she no. knows about football. Well, no. Can't take Corn Robinson. Mm -hmm. No, can't take Corn. <laughs> he's drunk. Um, and and uh, tell me who you would take. How about that? Well, I guess can't think of anyone. I would probably take Matt Leinart somewhere. Oh, jeez. Oh, boy, you want to sign up first? I Not asked. first. Let's let Terry in the, the league. The question was, oh. please. The question was very simply. If you have the first pick well, in the I draft. Have a, I need to know everybody, because I don't know everybody who's a That's there. my point! I don't have one of those fantasy football magazines that you guys all, right. all read so up on. So the only name that's coming to mind is I mean, Matt Leiner. So you're saying we no, cheat? No, hold on, hold on. Well, I'm not saying you cheat, but you guys definitely have the advantage over me. Would well, you take Sean Alexander over Matt Leiner? Hey! No! Jeez, Can I ask the questions here, please? Or it's going to be... Traffic reporter on the street. <laughs> Let's like the snakes on a plane. Get it? Okay. Yeah, sounds anyway. like a good movie. Uh -huh. uh, Terry. Yes. Now that Stephen has given you an idea of who maybe uh, a consensus number one pick is. Um. Let me think here. Um. That's too late now. Still okay. doing it. All right. Whatever. What else is going on? Well, I don't think he's the consensus uh -huh. number one pick. He absolutely is the consensus number one pick in just about everyone's draft. Really? Okay. Yes. Absolutely. He just ruined it, whether you realize it or not. Sean Alexander, across the country, when NFL fantasy football drafts go on, in about just, I'd say, upwards of 80, 90 percent of those drafts, mm -hmm. if not more, will be the first pick all over the world. Right. Hmm. Makes sense. Uh-huh. And you're right, I would have never even thought about it. You're going to take Matt Leinert. No, no, I wouldn't have taken Steve Matt I, mean, I would have probably taken, like, you know, the only other... Because I, I just never have gone to... A, I've never gone to a draft. Oh. So uh -huh. I really don't know the intricacies of the draft. Wow. Because you've never been. Because I've never been. So it's a, you it's know... It's not I'm that saying? intricate. Well... You pick a player. But you, you do... do it now. And you eat. <laughs> no, but I know you said that. I mean, it, it is. Oh, Steve you guys have the little history. magazines. I know that. And, yes. and what's so interesting, too, about it is now you have the commentators who actually, like, help you out. Well, that's because fantasy football is taking over the world. It's crazy. It used to be something that people thought of as a nerdy thing to right? do. Now everyone is on it's board. Huge. Huge. You just talked about how business is going to lose tons of money. Yeah. Well, and then, you know, I have a son who's asking me, am I going to play or do the fantasy football thing? And if I am, why why don't I use his uh -huh. help and stuff like that? And I'm like, because I can't call you in the middle of class. when You know, and I can't bring you to the draft. And Well, drafts usually don't take place during class time no, but, hours, Terry. But still, I mean, when, when, when Pacey has ever made trades place and stuff. In the dead of night in your stripped club of choice. All right. But when Pacey has ever had to put in, you power. know, any kind of <laughs> trades or moves. Yes. He's usually in class. Okay. I understand. So you're not going to be a part of it this year. Oh, and I understand because I know I don't know anything about it, so yes. I'm a hindrance to Pasty. Well, why don't you fight it a little bit and force him to include I'm... you, and if not, start your own little league with some of the sales girls around here. Right, oh. the girls in a draft. Yes. Right. I'm a hindrance, but I fought it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did you? Because <laughs> you wanted to feel like one of the guys? God, he's a walking hindrance, doesn't he? <laughs> Do you hear what Terry just said to you? So you could feel like one of the guys. I'm glad she's not a part of our team. Basically suggesting like that. that otherwise you're not one of the guys, Stephen. Mm -hmm. Are you going to take that crap? Sure. What else is going on, Terry? <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that 6% of men have man boobs? <laughs> Only 6 <laughs> And what qualifies as man boobs, he said, covering his chest? <laughs> well, it's, all, it's, it's actually called gynecomastia. Whatever. Yes, I remember uh, in the Ask Dr. Tony little commercials, right, he talked right. all, all about it. Uh, what it's, do you? How much do you need? How much girth? How much flesh? How much what? mass? How much uh, real estate do you need to be qualified as man boobs? Well, it's natural, first of all, and it happens because guys have too many female hormones uh, pumping around inside of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll be the first to admit, my nipples a tad bit larger than probably the average male, Terry. Well, how are they super? <laughs> <laughs> you say <laughs> Are they really? really? I mean, while the average guy would say his nipples are about, what, a dime or a quarter size? Yeah. Mine, uh, just a little bit wider than a quarter? I think I'm actually a buffalo nickel. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Might have sacked with your wee. <laughs> Are they are they puppy? Who, who, who's that now? I can't even. I don't even know. Sacagawea. Sacagawea. Yeah, did they say it right? Uh, you forgot the uh. Oh, okay. Sacagawea <laughs> is not good enough. It's 
close. <laughs> Nobody who was really close to her called her Sacagawea. I think it's Sacagawea. All right, so. but I'm asking you, oh, people right. that were close with her, they didn't no, call her Sacagawea. They called her Sac. No, it was her nickname. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway. So there. Well, um, they say here that yes. it can cause men to have extreme sensitivity in the nipple area. Well, my nipples are just completely dead, so that's that's not. Okay. Something. Well, yeah. it also dead. Is, I'm dead. Over there. Huh? <laughs> Uh, it says in about 10% of adolescent cases, mm. uh, the kids won't get large man boobs, but will have large puffy... 6%. That means 1 out of 20, Terry. That's... Yeah, that's actually... It's a startling rate of man boobs floating around the planet. Yeah. Every 1 in 20 guys you pass by is a man boob owner. I'll start counting down the office in order. <laughs> Out the cubicles. How many guys work in this on this floor in this office? How many guys work for I don't even know. Clear Channel Radio Seattle? At least sixty two. No more, I would say probably more than that. No, about maybe about that. Yeah. So that means there are three guys at least. Oh, more than that. Yeah, that damn sports we, station we screwed we, everything up. To bring up the curve. <laughs> but those are people that are just overweight. That's not what she's talking about. Well, some of it is because of being overweight. So yes. overweight is a symptom it of can being. Be, yes. No. Well, mm -hmm. You have a greater chance of having man boobs if you're overweight. Yes. Well, I'm clear of that. Or if you've abused steroids in the past. Mm-hmm. So. All right. Yeah, we're uh, bringing up the curve. Yeah. Tumors, liver disease, aging, or rare side effects from medication are also causes. Uh huh. Of the and the Mongolian grill. <laughs> oh, just... <laughs> now, are there any positives to having man boobs, at least from uh, a health or a female's perspective? Is there any women out there that are turned on to any degree by man boobs? I would say no, but I'm wondering. Can't yeah, possibly. Yeah, take be. some calls on that. The man boob stallion. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh huh. I don't think so. If you have man boobs, you know it, right? Of course you okay. do. Uh, I mean, we, yeah. then we have one guy, when we were doing boob camp, he had his man boobs. Yes. Oh, care, oh, those, we, oh, those were absurd, though. Yeah, yeah. and I we, mean, that, you know, that was huge. That's that was not huge. even what I'm, I'm thinking, just a slight hint of man boobs, whether that's, th that was just out and out breast that that guy had. Right. Yeah, his were borderline hot. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, it is. Now, my guess if I'm uh, reading hot hopscotch guy correctly, Terry, mm -hmm. I think he has this fear. I don't think he'll admit it, but I think he has this fear <laughs> that if he ever, he just cleared his throat because he knows he's uncomfortable at this time. I think he knows that if he ever stopped bench pressing, he doesn't want to be bench pressing at this point in his life. Right. But he knows if he ever stopped, it's man boom city. <laughs> Happy to admit it. So he's got to keep it up. <laughs> yes. Am I right? Absolutely. Oh, mention again today. Mm -hmm. Got to keep. Don't want to be here, but have no choice. <laughs> right. You got to keep the chest sticking off further than the gut, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the key to life. It's a race. <laughs> now I wonder if that fear is truly uh, a well-founded fear, Terry. Because do is that uh, according to your story? Maybe I don't know if it will say something like this, but um, a man who has worked out a lot in his life maybe hasn't been the biggest steroid dabbler, but uh, he's accustomed to working out with weights. If he were to just stop at whatever point in his life, is the likelihood of his chest turning into a man boob situation is that a realistic fear or what? Um, no, it's actually not. It's not. Mm -mm. Why do you say that? Well, because I don't see. I, I gave you some of. Of the causes. Yeah, just because it doesn't say it doesn't mean it's not. That. Well, yeah, true. Your right. story doesn't mention that. It just doesn't mention it, correct. Uh huh. So, I don't think you can stop. I think he's he's in for life. No, I'm, I can't. Uh -huh. No way. Should have never started. <laughs> like Stephen? <laughs> Stephen will never have that problem. Yeah. Right. Never right. got started with weights right. at any point in his life. Right. I wonder what the percentage are of guys, adult men, that have never lifted weights at any point in their life. I would say it's very small. Pretty weird. It's pretty bizarre. Eh, I don't need to. I'm good. Mm-hmm. I look awesome. I mean, at some point awesome. in every man's life, every adult man's life, Stephen, at some point, whether he stuck with it or not, but at some point, he, he went, he, he dabbled. He went a little run of lifting yeah. weights. You never even had a run. There was, I, never, I a two, run. There was never a two-month period where you were working out with weights. I mean, like bench pressing and, and oh, you know, like lat pull downs and stuff like that. He never really got into weights. Never did a weight uh, little run there. Well, I've had the runs. A, yeah, the runs, definitely. Uh, not something I enjoy, no. Well, most people don't enjoy it. Yeah, it's not like they're going to the gym going, yeah, I can't wait oh, yes. to bust this out. And I just want to point out how 
how rare that probably is. There might be three people in this studio. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. The little guy that just left? Pretty oh, sure he yeah. never has. I bet, no, I bet he did during... Like, no way. I mean, the not even is, a little run? But he's not at the point yet where you can consider him a full adult male that you can... <laughs> he's 22. <laughs> I, I mean, come on. But no. he could get into weights in his mid-20s. Okay. All right, all right. So you can't... He still has a chance. You can't group him into this weirdness yet. Pacey Dave has never had a... That's not true. Two-month period? I had... Has there been a two-month period where you were really into weights? I mean, not just a couple of dumbbell curls. No, I understand. It's going to be very close to two months. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we're talking very close. But I, I did have about a four, uh, no, about an eight week period there that yeah, I was going every other day and every trying other to work in the, the different sections of the body and all that crap. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's very and then he sections. said, cigarettes much easier. Like you had a, <laughs> you had a two month period where today was a chest and a try day, right. and tomorrow was a buy and lap day. You, you had that exactly. Had that yes. <laughs> Hmm. Stephen, does that ring any bells? Well, no, I've had a trainer and have done that, yeah. Oh, really? But it was, I don't know. I'm trying to think if, rack my brain if it lasted for two months or not, but... You had a trainer? Yeah. What year was this? Oh, back in the day. Um, <laughs> well, I worked downtown. It was a club across the street there. Was it like a little sponsor thing that was put together through the station or what? I actually paid for it, if you can believe that. Wow. Mm-hmm. All right, then. But I don't know if it lasted two months, so that's why I'm, I would not admit to that. <laughs> I hated it. Hmm. Is it because you just the, the soreness and stuff what, it hurt you, or it was just that you didn't see the results fast enough? After work, I'd rather go to lunch. Okay. <laughs> you just love food. That's very typical for guys to start and stop when sure. it comes to weightlifting, Terry. Understand. Two months is, is a good amount of time for... A guy to start lifting weights and then be like, nah, I'm not sticking with this. Right. That's very common. Mm-hmm. But I, my point was I never even thought Stephen had a, a point in his life where that happened. But he's saying he did. So I stand corrected. Well, it wasn't very long, though. Stephanie, you're on the air. Let me take some calls, Terrence. Stephanie, are you there? Stephanie. Stephanie's not there. Let's go to... Is this the same Sarah that was holding before us? Sarah. Sarah? Hello? Yes. Um, I wanted to see if I could win the um, tickets to the Emerald Downs. You're not the same Sarah that was holding on before? Huh? I certainly have a place for her at Emerald Downs, Terry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> In the stirrups. Yeah. Uh, those braiding ones. Well, you're not the same Sarah that was holding on before, is my question. Yes, I was. I've been holding on for a while. No, no, no. Not the girl who gave you the MySpace. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, what could you add to the VIP suite at Emerald Downs? Because everyone should be able to add something to this <laughs> this night's festivities, Terry. Mm-hmm. You can't just sit on the couch and look cool. Yeah. We have plenty of that. <laughs> what do you uh, add to the VIP suite put together by Pepsi at uh, Emerald Downs on f- a week from Friday? I could add my boyfriend. <laughs> Thanks for the call. Have a great day. Oh, <laughs> could. <God>. Courtney. <laughs> you could. It's your turn. <laughs> Courtney, are you there? Yeah, it's Courtney. What's up, Courtney? How can you say Sean Alexander is <laughs> consensus number one draft pick in fantasy football? Guy named Courtney. Well, Larry Johnson. Is, mm-hmm. Out of every magazine I've read, Larry Johnson has been number well, one. Well, I hate to get too technical with you, but Larry Johnson only did it over like an eight, nine game period last year. Didn't have the uh, the full season's body of work that Sean Alexander had, and not just a full season for Sean. He had a, a few good years before that, if I recall correctly. And uh, also, on top of that, Larry Johnson lost one of his top linemen who retired. Maybe you heard of Willie Rove, maybe you haven't. Uh, I don't want to get two X's and O's into this, Terry, but uh, if I have the first pick in the draft, I am certainly not taking Lawrence Johnson okay, as my number one pick. But you go ahead and you enjoy your very long football season. All right. Larry and enjoy Johnson the view from below in the standings of your fantasy football, fantasy football league. What? Exactly. <laughs> Where is this? Uh, is his name Steve Smith? Where does he fall? But the one thing he was correct about, I'll answer your question in a second, Jerry. The okay. one thing he was correct about is a lot of these hack fantasy football publications yes. and how many are there Tons. these days six million it's a little racket now 
of putting out fantasy football magazines to the point where the the information is so watered down that they're offering Larry Johnson as the number one pick. Not that he's not uh, a, a first round pick. Not that he's not even. I was. I would go as far as to say definitely a top five pick, Terry. Mm-hmm. But you are taking a major risk by mortgaging your fantasy football franchise. <laughs> With Lawrence Johnson as your number one pick. I'm sure this means a lot to you, Terry. Sure. Mm-hmm. Steve Smith? Yes. Mm-hmm. A little diminutive wide receiver from Carolina. Yeah, but he's a yeah. tough little diminutive. Uh, I understand. And uh, he is clearly one of the top one, two, or three receivers available in the draft, Terry. Right. Maybe now that they have uh, Keyshawn Johnson on that team. Mm. Again, I hate to get too technical. Uh, he could be the top receiver in the draft. Oh, cool. But receivers traditionally don't go in the top five or ten picks, Terry. They go, like, second round, right? Usually the, the fir- usually the top receiver will go late in the first round. Oh. Yes. Call me with all of your fantasy football needs on my 900 number. <laughs> do you think, well, before I call that number, do you think uh, Terrell Owens is a bad pick? For you think receiver? I should have it? Would I be the best informational yeah, 900 you'd... number available? Because you'd be hitting people over with the truth. Because oh, I'm giving you the truth. <laughs> I'm not giving you bad advice. I'm giving you all the, all the right advice. <laughs> But T.O. is hurt, so he's kind of a risk, always is he hurt. not? T.O. is always a risk even when he's not hurt, Terry. He's, right. uh, he's always hurt mentally, physically. Yes. Uh, but when on the field, hard-pressed to find a better performer from the wide receiver position mm-hmm. than Terrell Owens. What about Randy Moss? Oh, geez, Terry. You just going to throw out everyone out there now? Oh, I'm- What about Rand- Steve Larger? <laughs> Randy Moss was a big disappointment last year, but right. expect somewhat of a bounce-back year okay. for Randall Moss. I'm staying away. Burn me last year. I'm not saying pick him in the first round. I'm not even saying uh, early second round. But you get mid to late second round. And Randall Moss could be the steal of the draft. Whoa. What does Stephen Kilbreth fall in on the draft? You know what? I shouldn't give you all this information <laughs> without you calling my 900 number. Okay, hold on. All right. We should get it for free, though. Stephen, there is no 900 number. But uh, when there is one... Which could be by 5 o'clock today. Uh, <laughs> you'll be the first not to get it. Okay. <laughs> so who gets these uh, Emerald Down tickets? Have we decided yet? Have I given them away yet? Did no. Did you give them okay. to Courtney? No. Joy! Oh. Wouldn't Hello? it be nice to have Joy <laughs> in the VIP suite? Yes. Yes, Joy. I need to go. I need to go. Oh, why the <laughs> urgency uh, in your voice there? What? <laughs> I'm sure there's a porta potty nearby. Yeah, I'll pull over to the side of the road. What's going on? You sound old enough to be able to take care of that. Mm-hmm. Oh, I just really want to go. To Emerald Downs. It sounds like tons of fun. Well, maybe now we're overbuilding in your mind. <laughs> so is she. That's a problem. Joy, uh, what can, as I asked the last caller, what can you bring to the VIP suite that that's, that's not there already? Well, um, I could give some tips on betting. I kind of know a little bit about it. Oh, betting. I'll call your 900 number for that, Joy. What else can you, what do you bring? Maybe maybe this question is too difficult, Terry. Or maybe there are so oh. many women out there with nothing to offer. Maybe so. That they can't think of a damn thing. Maybe their husband should have asked this before they got married to these ladies. <laughs> what can I you, just, what can I, you I bring, can bring to the VIP fun. suite? What? I can, I can just bring more fun. We're all filled I'm up with fun. I'm fun. Uh, I could just cute? bring more fun to the party. What'd she say? She's cute? She said she was cute. Did you say you were cute? I'm cute. I'm fun. I can bring more fun to the party. <laughs> Did you hear how she said it the second time? Yeah. I'm cute. Almost yeah. like in a fetus attitude. I think I am. I'm <laughs> cute. Questioning it a bit, it sounds like. Mm-hmm. Even questioning it in her own oh, mind. Oh, please, T-Man, please. Mm. How Terry? old is she? She sounds... Terry, just asked you a question, Joy. Uh, I can't hear you. How old are you? I'm 33. Oh, jeez. And uh, who would you bring? Because if you were so lucky as to get these VIP passes, you would get two. Who would you bring with you? Uh, probably my best friend, Ann. Best friend, Ann. Every 33-year-old Joy has a best friend, Ann, Terry. <laughs> yeah, sounds like a real hot couple. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I can say I could bring my boyfriend, but that's not going to be fun. Well, is that who you'd bring? No, I you, think my friend Ann. I want Ann. You can't have fun with your boyfriend. Oh, jeez. She wants Ann. All Ooh. right, Joy. I'm going to give you the passes. Hang Ooh, on. Congrats. All right? Woo-hoo. Hang on the line. Oh, what a waste. <laughs> <laughs> Try again tomorrow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, we have more tickets to give away for today, too. Oh, good. Yes, but I'm not going to give them away until uh, at least an hour from now, at the end of the show. Right. So between now and 930... 
I would like to take calls, but not for Emerald Downs VIP passes. I want to take calls on anything else. one 663 team man back after the... The Swagger. I had a quick question to ask you about on the Steelers, actually. You know, it's weird with you calling this time of day. It only makes it that much weirder with you asking questions about football. Well, it was one of the things that somebody brought up um, after well, when we got jipped out of the game. Um, there was one. The only more bizarre about him asking questions about football, Terry, would be him asking questions about girls. Yeah, but he's not interested in girls. Fish out of water, which is my, exactly my point. I don't think you. I'm shocked that he's interested in football, even to any degree, that he's asking any question about football. Well, yeah. Schwager, don't you want to talk about the Star Trek convention that's going on? Basically, is it this week as we speak right now yeah, in Las Vegas. Vegas? Yeah. How come you're not there? Well, thousands, I don't have the money to be there. Thousands of Star Trek fans have converged on Las Vegas. I think it's at the Las Vegas Hilton. Where is it at? I don't know. I know they have that, that display. Las Vegas Hilton. Yeah. They, oh, he knows. It makes sense. They've it. all converged. Can you imagine that? Is this the week you want to be in Vegas? Oh, my I God. I don't think so. <laughs> I just saw a Klingon. Thousands and thousands of Star Trek fans, yeah. as they do on a yearly basis, have converged on Las Vegas to share their Star Trek thoughts at the Star Trek convention. And their motto, by the way, Terry, is what happens in Vegas uh -huh. will never happen to me. <laughs> Fitting. <laughs> Actually, this celebration's gone on for 40 days in Vegas. Is that right? Yes. Mm -hmm. 40 days? Yeah, because one week is not enough. Oh, I get it. Mm. From middle of August to middle of September. Also, they have a convention coming up here in Seattle, but either way, I, I don't have enough money to go to either. When is the... Yeah, why, they have the most money to go to Seattle. Why not Seattle? How much is it? What, 30, 40 uh, bucks? Someday I'll be able to travel to Seattle. The tickets are in the $100 range. Mm. Schwagger, if it's your dream... Yeah. How often do they have a Star Trek convention in Seattle? It's not a yearly thing. Yeah, you did it last year, I thought. Yeah, did you? Oh, I gave it to him last I year? I think you paid for him last no, year. I thought you did, too. Oh, man. No, 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 no. no. Or was it this the year thing you were was, supposed to? Last year, it was in fall, I was asking if I could get tickets to it, but you said I could if I just skipped out on my math, on my math final. Mm-hmm. Oh. And I didn't skip out, so you didn't give me the tickets. Did I give you tickets and or not? No. You did not give me tickets. So you didn't go? Because I did not... What? Would you like to go this year? I would like to go, actually. Is it every year in Seattle? Yes. No. Well, no. no, no, oh. no not like this. Oh, Lord, I mean, why, they is only this have why is this conversation so painful? Go ahead, yes. I mean, they only have it, like, for two days, and I think it's over in Everett, actually. Mm-hmm. And that's always in February. All right, how much are the tickets? <laughs> what do you want I don't us? know. <laughs> um, I can take a quick look at my laptop. Okay. It'll be my gift. But to you. also, but no, the reason I'm calling you is, Lord, I was just curious. That guy that was supposedly going to retire from the Steelers, did he retire? Jerome Bettis, yeah, yeah, as retired as any football player who's ever retired. Yes. Okay, because I, because I, there was a controversy that he wasn't actually going to retire, and I, you know, controversy with all that other. Yeah, with your. Well, well, I mean, I've been hearing that he was just saying he was going to retire that way people feel more sympathetic for the. Are you going to look a boob this summer or not? <laughs> How many weeks are left what? in summer? Not technically, many. It's couple three. Yeah. Summer, oh, summer yeah. ends technically September twentieth, so, so it's more there's more times than you think. Yeah. Are, are you gonna go? Well, huh? I still have twenty. Oh. I, st <laughs> I still have twenty nine days left of my summer vacation. You could have two thousand ninety nine days left in the summer, and you're not going to be doing anything of that nature. Okay, first, of what nature? All right, never mind. What is there anything else you need? No, obviously. Uh, okay, bye-bye. <laughs> there he goes. God, he's so he's all discombobulated if he doesn't call at 6.30 in the morning, too. I know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Jeez. Lisa! Lisa, are you there? Oh, yeah, I'm here. Oh, that's nice to hear. one 663 T-Man is the number to call. I'm going to be taking a lot of calls here. Yes, Lisa, what can I do for you? Yeah, I was just calling in because I think that if a guy has man taters, he knows. I work with all men, and they talk about it all the time when they have them. When they have them? Man, man taters? Yeah, yeah I want my man taters today. <laughs> just for you there, Bob. What do you mean if they have them? They, they, that would mean they talk about it nonstop all the time. Because if they have them, they have them all the time, right? Yeah, they have them all the time. I worked at this limo company, and this guy had the biggest boobs ever, and he talked about getting a boob job all the time. 
Now, was there ever a moment that that did anything for you, or is no. it uh, just a complete nightmare for you and Gross. all women across the board? Gross. It was awful. He'd whip them out, too. If a man had man boobs, he never got the urge to, like, as men do, put them, you know, press them hard together and then stick your face in there, or no? Oh. No. no. Why is he that? talks all the time about how hard they were. Because I love doing that as a guy to women, Terry, so I'm just wondering if it's a level playing field to any degree by any woman out there. If she'd love to take a guy's man boobs, press them together, and go... Doesn't sound attractive. No, I would imagine it wouldn't be. They're mm-hmm. gross. They're hard, and they, they're they not shaped the right way. Well, if they're way, hard, they're then they're more pecs right. than boobs, right? <laughs> He touched them all the time, and he would talk about how hard they were. Well, that would be probably a man appreciating his own pectoral muscles. Is that what you're confusing with man boobs or no? No, they were boobs. They were hanging down banana boobs. Did he know? <laughs> oh, man. Did he know they were hanging down banana boobs? <laughs> yeah, he talked about getting a boob job all the time. Mm. Hanging out banana boobs. <laughs> How do you like a banana for lunch there, Lisa? Oh, I'll peel it. Wow. What do you, you you work at a limo company? No, I used to in Salt Lake. Now I am a loader operator up in Redmond. Mm, she loads. Mm-hmm. And you're one of very few women, if any uh, other women exist on that job. Is that the deal? There's one other girl. One other girl. Wow. So what aspect, what kind of personality trait does it take that obviously you have that uh, has you gravitating to a job that is specifically designed, let's be honest, for the male species? Well, I don't have any brothers. My dad has three daughters, and it's good money, good retirement, good insurance, stuff like that. Or is it that, man, that sounds like a reasonable possibility as to why you are where you are, or could it be... That you're just so damn horny, you need as many guys around you as possible at all times. No way. No. Uh Uh-huh. No way. So what do you wear on the job there? A little sundress? (laughs) No, my... (laughs) You and your sundresses, I swear. Mm -hmm. No, my husband makes me wear work-appropriate outfits to make me look like a sack of potatoes. Oh, but if it wasn't for your husband for picking out your clothes and laying them on the bed for you, you'd be dressing like a slut every day on the job. Exactly. Mm. Something to be said about a sack of potatoes. So. <laughs> oh, jeez, Stephen. <laughs> Turn Stephen on. Yeah, that whole thought, man. He's going to look inside where are the potatoes. Right. <laughs> mm. So your husband, it sounds kind of controlling. Yeah, he is. Uh-oh. Does that do it for you or no? Um, sometimes. I was a pretty wild child, so he's calmed me down a lot. Really? Are you still wild with only him now, though, or are you just not wild at all anymore? No, not so much. I'm I'm older. Mm-hmm. I got it all out. But you still love sex, even if oh, it's yeah, just with your husband, it's, right? Yeah, it's awesome. What's your specialty? Oh, <laughs> uh, He's a loader <laughs> operator. <laughs> uh-huh. Don't break the load. I don't know. I can't say. I don't want my dad to be listening. Well, he already knows. All right. <laughs> <laughs> he has three daughters. <laughs> yeah. one 866 team man Back with more calls after these words. <laughs> I'm okay, telling before we get back to the phones at one eight six 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 three T man as you know, as always, as usual, text pages roll in at nine seven three seven three. Don't you know that's nine seven three seven three? Don't you know? And uh at eight forty eight and twenty one seconds somebody writes T man, I can't wait to go see Snakes in a Wizard Sleeve this weekend, starring Terry Free. <laughs> wow. Mm-hmm. Definitely going to see that. Damn, that sounds awesome. Out. That would be a hell of a porno right there. Jeez. I was trying to hide it from you guys. Mm-hmm. Somebody busted me. Yes. 847 and 20 seconds. Somebody writes, T-Man, you should give a shout out to the Concrete Boys on strike. My boyfriend is out there picketing as we speak, and they listen to you every morning. Signed, Lindsay. The Concrete Boys, Terry? Yeah, they're still on strike. Mm-hmm. Oh, don't wait, fellas. Okay. Well, uh, hopefully that ends soon. And yeah. to the workers liking, Terry. As yes. you know, as I've said many times, I'm a blue-collar guy through and through, Terry. At least at heart. And uh, I'm always rooting for the, for the working guy over the man. Yep. So hopefully they'll realize the value that you guys have and they're lacking right now. And they'll bring you back with everything you ever wanted and more. Yep. I'm a blue-collar guy, too. Which is why I love watching the guy cut my lawn. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
A lot of admiration. Yeah. <laughs> he does a fine job, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. You're cutting your own lawn and you know it. Okay. A44. I think you are, man. A44. Yeah, you gotta be I got a little nice lounge chair, picture 11A. What a blue collar guy. Yeah. All right. <laughs> You missed the spot. Uh, <laughs> Can you pull that weed over there? 8.44 and 42 seconds. Ash Swagger, if he grew some scrotum and punted his useless bunt of a mom to the street yet. People oh. are following the life and times of Matthew R. Schwager, Terry. I know. And trust me, I'm not calling him back to ask him any questions. Uh, let's see here. Uh, what? Team, what are your five, top five picks for fantasy? Call my 900 number. Uh... 8.32 and 20 seconds. Lawrence Johnson ran for 1,500 yards in nine games. Are you kidding me, T-Man? Well, that's true. And that was most <laughs> impressive. However, if you draft him number one, you don't all of a sudden get those stats. You don't all of a sudden acquire those stats from last year. Right. People love to draft based on looking in the rearview mirror, Terry. That's one of the pitfalls that I highlight on my 900 number, Terry. Oh, okay. That people make all the time. People drafting from last year's stats, not able to look around the curve ahead, as we say in the trade. Sure. And some of the biggest and worst bus and draft mistakes are made with those thoughts in mind. Mm. Not to mention, as I already did, and Larry Johnson from your Kansas City Chefs, Terry, he uh, lost on the offensive line. One of the most big-time offensive linemen to come down the pike in modern days, Willie Rofe, an all-pro for so many years, will not be blocking for Larry Johnson, who got a lot of his runs off left tackle. Terry, I don't want to get two X's and O's here, all right? right. Call my 900 number! You guys need it more than ever, obviously! You're a disgrace! You're going to all finish last! Thanks to me, you'll probably finish mid-pack now. Uh, let's see here. 8.30 and 48 seconds. Fred Taylor is the best pick in the draft. Oh, Jesus. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Terry, I, I thought I just went I know. beyond the call of duty in, in telling people how desperately they, they need me, but now I, I realize it even a further degree. Well, it's Fred Taylor. Uh, he's the best pick of the draft, Stephen. He's a threat to get 100 yards rushing and receiving every time he plays a game, according to this texter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if this was 1999, I would agree with you. Mm. Unfortunately, I look at the calendar, it says 2006, Terry. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And the 2006... He's a fourth rounder at best. Oh. 2006 already. Jeez. Jeez. <laughs> hey, 18 and 36 seconds, T. You're effing crazy. You would take weak ass Sean Alexander over Larry Johnson. You are effing nuts. But I love the show. All right. Want to have a little side bet? Oh. I can't Shit. do that, Terry. Ruin my credibility. I'm a 900 number. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Here's another one Snakes in a Wizard's Sleeve. Jeez. Uh, yeah, same same number. He loves this one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Snakes on a plane looks more stupid to pay $10 for than screen door and a submarine. Okay, good luck. Uh, <laughs> I'd go see that. Uh, that's funny. <laughs> it looks pretty good. <laughs> Team, man, don't imply the terrorist can't be white. All right, yeah, technically, I guess any terrorist can be of any color, but let's talk realistically here. What was the last true terrorist that's been white? All right, and don't give me to the Timothy McVeigh. Just because he blew up a building and was a crazy man mm -hmm. was not a terrorist. All right? Got anyone else? Anyone want to offer anyone? Doesn't mean tomorrow there couldn't be a white terrorist doing terrible things. So, yes, I agree. However, I don't even remember what we were talking about, Terry, that brought this up. Uh, oh, you, were, you, weren't, you weren't implying that all yeah. terrorists weren't white either, by the way. The the lady who suffered oh, yeah, a panic attack. Yeah. 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 I was making a joke at a funny moment. Right. You just throw the woman's face to right. the window. She's white! Right, right. Well, believe me, if in those desperate times, you would do anything to convince those <laughs> fighter planes to right. not shoot you down. But since we're on the subject, give me a white terrorist, Terry. Who's the, who's the first pick of your white terrorist <laughs> draft? Unabomber. Well, the Unabomber was a crazy man as well, and he... Uh, he certainly, I'll even go as far as to say he was a man with a message. But your your modern day terrorist is certainly, there's got to be some connection to religion. And the Unabomber uh, did not have that aspect. Right. Did not have that aspect. So I'm going to say, eh, doesn't qualify in your terrorist draft. Oh. So who's your number one pick in your terrorist draft, Terry? Our President Bush. Oh, jeez. Oh, right, oh, Terry, now wow. you got it. Nailed it. <laughs> Forgot about that. <laughs> I know. Steal of the draft. Terry, Homeland Security wants to meet with you after the show. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. 
All right. Okay, let's see. Let's move on, shall we? Yes. Ken Doll. What? Whoa. Whoa. Hey, I haven't heard from her in a long, long time. She's a forgotten woman. Yeah, it's been forever. Forever. Where are you? How you doing? What's the latest? Well, flipping hot as hell. My car it doesn't broke down. The air conditioning stopped working like half a desert. So I'm trying to go get it fixed right now. It's like a million degrees out. So you're not you're not on campus. You're not at the University of Arizona yet. You're still enjoying oh, no, the fun I'm and in, frolics I'm of the ride with my What? I'm in Tucson. My mom and I finally got in at about midnight last night, but it was like so hot. So right now she's sleeping, and I'm trying to go get the car fixed so she won't complain anymore about the heat. So you're in Tucson. Yeah, we're in Tucson. Mm hmm. And yeah. uh, but you're not quite at the University of Arizona yet. Well, no, classes don't start till Monday. And did you guys pick up any hitchhikers along the way? <laughs> yeah, I picked up a couple. No, of course not. That's so dangerous. <laughs> but all, I pick up a hitchhiker. all the thrill rides of life are dangerous. Aren't you oh. supposed to be participating in Rush? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm doing that today too. So, so you'll I'm just get the car fixed. Real so fast. you'll be at school later today. Well, yeah, I'll be at the house. Mm-hmm. Pouring tequila yeah, down the poor freshman's throats. Getting all those new little babies in. Oh, Lord. Yes. Jeez. So you got to paddle some asses this year, some freshman mm. girls, or what? Of course not. Hazing is illegal and completely unallowed on the University of Arizona campus. That's right. Mm. That's the, that's the official don't... statement. Have you seen the ogre yet? Have I? No, I haven't. Mm. Is that reunion going to happen later today? No, not today. I don't know. I'll probably see him sometime, but not... Not any time. There's no plans. Has the word has the word gotten around the University of Arizona campus that you are going to be spending your senior year as an available, free, single, unattached woman? Yeah, I think it's posted on Facebook, so I'm sh pretty sure the people who want to know will know. I I'm single. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of excited. I I'm can't wait single. to that on Monday. I know. <laughs> Was it like this when she was here? <laughs> yes. Something mm -hmm. that air or something. Yeah. She's just all giddied up for college. She sounds extra nauseating. Just deal with it, bear with it, work with her. Okay, maybe not. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm extra nauseating. I'm already horrible. You don't want to talk to well, me. No, no, I'm just, no. We're not saying what you're saying. Just the sound of your voice sounds extra sorority girlish and... A little extra effect on your voice, you know. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so no, excited. We like it. I'm geared up. Mm -hmm. oh. uh, when are you guys going to come down and take a little road trip down to see me? All right, let me look at the calendar. Uh, three weeks from never. Oh, see, come on. Mm -hmm. I think you need a functional family yeah, that, road trip. That's what I'm going to be doing some point in the year, Terry. I'm going to yeah. be on the University of Arizona campus hanging out with Kendall and her little sorority friends. Oh, right. fun, fun, fun. That's going to be. You know what weekend? We'll make a big plan. We can go see a football game or something together. Mm -hmm. Do they do they know in your house that I'm uh, known as the Butterscotch uh, Stallion? What? No, I don't think anyone in my house really knows about you guys. Mm. Okay, perfect. Well, maybe there's a good reason to go down after all. They're right? going to be so shocked when you come down. Do you know why Owen Wilson is nicknamed the Butterscotch Stallion there, Kendall? Oh, my goodness, he is? Yes. Oh, I'm, I'm so behind on my celebrity news. Tell me, fill me in. No, I'm not telling you. <laughs> Have to find out for yourself. I'm sure you will in a matter of time. <laughs> Two weeks in. Mm hmm. I need Terry's stories in my life. I'm so behind. It's okay. Behind. Mm -hmm. Well, you're close. <laughs> so it's just you and mom driving down the, the left side of the country. God, yeah. It was a long trip. Did you guys bond, though? Have some nice mom and daughter moments? Yeah, we bonded. We fought. We. Yelled at each other, I think, a little bit. It was very, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Ended up all good, but wow. it was a long trip. It was like four days of straight driving. Mm. We stopped in Palm Springs, hung out with Grandma for a little while, and then Crap. continued on, and that's when the air conditioning uh, Sounds very happened. exciting. Okay, when did you, <laughs> how often did you pee, and when did you get uh, moments for self-gratification time? Oh, my goodness. Well, um, I think we were sweating so much that we didn't really have to pull over for the bathroom because the car was broken. Okay, so when but, you're sweating, uh, you don't have to pee as much. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you know. You're right. And then no no self-gratification time. Mm, so you're all horned up and ready for college fun. So ready for Monday. I can't what? wait. So when was the last time you had any kind of sexual release? Oh, come on. No, I don't even... I, no time. I'm just saying you're a very dangerous woman on campus. That's all I'm implying. That's why she. Well, I was a very dangerous house. woman all summer until. Why? Because you didn't you didn't uh, masturbate all through the summer. Is no. that what you're saying? I do not want to if, talk about this. If I had no, known that, I would never let her in the studio too. Really? Not even at Dave's apartment. 
What do you think? That things are just open season now that I'm gone? You talk about crazy subjects? Yeah, we never talked about anything crazy when she was in the studio, oh, Terry. She, no, she didn't have to quit for uh, right. reasons that she wasn't able to talk. Uh, <laughs> it, that's that's what you're telling us. That's that's not a part of your lifestyle. No. Do you believe her, Terry? No. Wow. We're supposed to believe you, but you don't well, believe her. No lot. I haven't been in this. I, I'm so pretty long. honest about Stephen, who I am. Stephen Kendall has just suggested. That a gratifying moment that is self-inflicted is not part of her life and times. I don't mm. need that in my life. <laughs> I am you asking need? you if you believe her or not. Please use any instinctful little uh, radar gadgets that you may have in your system there, Stephen, and uh, give me an answer as to whether or not. From what she's saying, the way she's saying it, how it's coming out. Oh, geez. Uh, if you are picking up on a reason to believe her or not believe her, well, I give believe, us your response at this time. Okay, I believe that she does not need it, but I believe that she has partaken in the activity. When was the last time? I'm going to say it's, it was this summer sometime. Mm -hmm. oh, so she doesn't do it often. So it would just be another no, never-ending stream of lies, is what you're well, saying from Kendall. Right? Steven knows what you did last summer. Steven. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel the same, that she has done this, even though she's basically implying that she never has in her life? Hopscotch Scott? I think she has, but not this summer. <laughs> not, not, not in a house full of girls. Too scared was, to get caught. I think she has. Summer. She did it this summer when she found a moment to do it. Uh, even with a five-girl uh, house, there are still some times where you can make it happen. And not only did it happen this summer on somewhat of a regular basis, but it happened during the journey down to Arizona at some convenient time. <laughs> no, Pete, you're completely crazy. What? And I was working 80-hour work weeks. Do you think I have any time to do anything now. like that? I don't think so. I was yeah. working and sleeping. Mm -hmm. so. Am I crazy, Terry? Am I? Uh, you know, or am I, call you that. am I just so right that I just blew her mind? Well, probably she, that. she did go down to the first floor bathroom a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Kendall. Yes. Have a great college day. Oh, thank you. You yes. guys have a great Seattle day. I miss you guys already. Mm, okay, that makes one of us. All right, okay. thank you, Kendall. There she goes. Bye, Kendall. What oh, a big day. Oh. He was born in the bayou. Eating a ham sandwich. With a golden spoon. Uh, I mean, with golden teeth. I think romantic is just sitting down and what well, a life this. Together. He's a guy looking for Miss Dude. Where is he? He was just there. He was just there. I know. And now he's gone. Pretty sure we know how the first part's going to go, so go ahead. I say, wow! <laughs> yeah. okay. He's not there. All right. Huh. All right, then. Didn't want to wait. Maybe a little breezy went walking by. and Had to jump on that. And I certainly understand the priority list. We would certainly come in a distant second from a moment of opportunity for the ham sandwich man. Right. You never know when a moment of opportunity is going to strike the ham sandwich man, Terry. Mm-hmm. Let's see, where should we go now? Who's next? Bill! Yes, Bill. Hey, first of all, I gotta say this, T. It's a travesty! Okay. Investigate those referees! Okay, well, you're a little, uh, you know... I'm a little late know. with that call, but uh, we are on a seven-second delay, so I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> uh, go ahead, Bill, what else? What else? I want to know when the fearless... Travesty! <laughs> yes, Bill, I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, fearless forecaster, when are you going to make your Super Bowl pick? Super Bowl picks? Jeez, yes. we haven't even started the season. We're oh. one game into the preseason, Bill. Oh, but it's fearless. You should know. He does know, but I wouldn't dare bother the man with a Super Bowl pick until we get closer to uh, the Super Bowl. Maybe during Super Bowl week. How about that for making a Super Bowl pick as far as fearless is concerned? All right, fearless is not... He's not like some guy able to just uh, look at the stars and pick a winner like that. Right. But when he knows the two combatants and he goes over endless amounts of data, then and only then is he able to make a pick. I think people are confused with Fearless being some kind of Karnak kind of guy. Yeah. He's not some circus clown. He's not some rodeo sideshow. <laughs> and he and I resent... <laughs> That you're suggesting that that's the case. But he could go game to game. Huh? Okay. 
He could go right now. Game by game through the whole season and figure it all out, but that, I guess, is a lot of work. You know, he's past the point in his life where he has to work that hard. Okay. <laughs> all right. I'm just mailing it in now. That's not When nice. you have a house in the south of France, you won't be working that hard either. <laughs> okay. All right. Please. He puts six billion on one game and calls it a day. Oh. He was born in the bayou. Eating a ham sandwich. With a golden spoon. Uh, I mean, with golden teeth. I think romantic is just sitting down and what a like this. He's a guy looking for Miss Do Right. And in the meantime, f***ing everybody inside. Mm. <laughs> yeah. He's high on life. And probably something else, too. <laughs> and now, the most romantic man in the land. Just chilling. He's the ham sandwich guy. I say what? How are you today, hamster? Oh man, I'm just chilling like a villain this morning. Got on my dancing shoes for anybody that won't go out dancing tonight. You dig? Mmm. So it is a Thursday club night. As far as the ham sandwich man is concerned, he's got his footwear all ready to go, and he is looking for a dance partner. Watch out. Want to fill up his dance card. Mm-hmm. Because <laughs> you, you already know off top, yesterday was hump day, and last night I humped away until Blue Thursday. Really? So it wouldn't be exactly a Blue Thursday for you. It'd be a, a very satisfying start to your Thursday if you had a big hump-filled night. Is that what you're, is that what you're saying? You had a lot of uh, stuff going on last night? Well, T man, I had a lot of stuff going on yesterday evening all the way until last night. Not only did I have a lot of stuff going on, I had a woman confront me about her charm. What? Uh-oh. Suggesting that you are a uh, a father? Is that what you're implying here, Hammy? Hmm. That's not quite the idea. Okay. She wants you to be a father of her charm? Well, actually, um... A few weeks ago, I ended up getting into a very large dispute with a whole bunch of churn, meaning that uh, I ended up cussing them out. Yeah, well, and, they had it coming, those little four-year-olds. And, and not only uh, was I cussing them out, the cuss words was like real violent, meaning that I had to call all the churn a whole bunch of dishes. Now, what would prompt you to start using a just never-ending barrage of swear words and churn? You say what? We'll repeat that again. What would prompt you? What would cause you to start swearing, cursing at children? Oh, man, it went off on me like a time bomb. Now, the, the thing that I'm quite sure most parents do know to a degree, but some parents don't act like they don't know this. How, so. old, how old are we talking about? How old? Uh, can we uh, break this down maybe all the way from 13 to 11? All right. So they wow. they got uh, to you, to you and they uh, they were the ones who caused this moment in your opinion. Well, uh, actually, you know, I, w- I was telling the mama, you know, basically the story, you know, let her know that you. Well, know. what? Tell me what happened. What did they do to you? How did they not show the uh, the respect that the ham sandwich man deserves? Okay, this this was they probably didn't even know who I was, but anyway, I How was. Would they walk- I was downtown renting on the late night, walking through the transit center, Mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, I seen a strange dance move that's called the Pussy Pop. You dig? This theme, this, I guess, you know, I didn't have my glasses on, so I really couldn't tell, you know, how old the person was. Oh, you're kicking yourself for not bringing your glasses when the Pussy Pop's going on, too. (laughs) I guess so. (laughs) Yes. Well, look, look, I was walking, you know me, I I am the BDK, you dig? I understand. And you you saw the Pussy Pop happen, and then what happened? (laughs) Look, I'm walking, and I'm like, uh, that show is nasty, but I kept it pushing. But after the minute after I said what I said, and I kept it pushing, out of nowhere, the girl just went to acting a fool, cussing me all out, telling me this and that, and after that, the other little cheering jumped in. The next thing you know, he got some more cheering jumped in, so you know, hey. So it was I- Hammy against 17 kids. Wow. If I'm tallying correctly here, Terry. Sounds like it. Man, it was a whole bunch of churn out there. It was so off the chain to one of the little boys came up there and pushed me, and that really distracted me. Oh, jeez. You know, then, this is a sight I'm sorry I, I missed. <laughs> then then sh- shortly after that happened, uh, the police pulled up and uh, just like, y'all got to calm it down because uh, 
you know, at the Ritten Transit Center is the apartment complex right there at the Transit Center, and the people got to live. Right, well, regardless, Hammer, you're a 30-some-odd-year-old man now. Are you really ready at this point in your life to be taking on 13-year-olds? <laughs> Say, listen, when it's time, you know, I was, I, I was all, I also, I was in the zone, meaning that I was on that gin and juice that night. Mm. You know, because it, it was on. He was on gin and juice that night, Terry. Yeah, just that hey. night. And you talk about wanting a dance partner, <laughs> Hammy. You know, when you're in the clubs, the word I get on you is you don't like to dance with anyone. You like to dance alone. Yeah, I say why? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But just, well, they just. She just better stand back and let me bust my moves. Then. Wow. So somebody's mom came and confronted you today? Uh, well, it happened yesterday, but the uh, thing And you wound up having sex with her? <laughs> nah, nah, don't don't take this for me. I will put that BBK on her, but uh, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? She was just mainly uh, interested in her churn, and as a good mom, she uh supposed to do that. But she also told me that she know that her churn is uh quite you know, off the chain. Okay. So any follow-up questions here, Terry, that need to be uh, asked in your mind? Or are you I, good I, with the situation? I, I think I'm good. I Stephen, think I any, any questions that are standing out as needing to be answered, or are you good with the situation? I don't see him doing anything wrong. If people are doing that sort of dance, then he yes, has every has, uh, expectation that they're going to be over. Luckily brought the Pussy Pop over from Brazil to <laughs> our country, Terry. And now it has just exploded on the streets of Seattle, so you can blame Stephen for this. And, uh... Hammy was just trying to get into the mode himself the other night and uh, apparently took it maybe one step or a few steps too far with a 13-year-old well, girl. Well, but the thing is, is that if she is, you know, <laughs> acting really obnoxious, then mm -hmm. I mean, not to say that you should go off on them, but I'm kind of wondering where the parent is in controlling of their controlling their children out that late. It sounds like they were out late. Well, it's the summertime. So, uh, Hammy. Well, now. When this girl is doing the pussy pop, she's uh, dancing. She's probably, you said, in the range of 11 to 13. Did you put your, your hands on her to join in on the dancing fun or what? But, but, but T-Man, do you know what that dance is? And do you know how that dance is confected? If you don't think that I'm not doing it every night with my pregnant <laughs> wife at home, you got another thing. Wow, I would love hey, to see that. Mm -hmm. I, I, I can believe that because uh, that particular dance move is off the chain. It's especially uh, fun for a pregnant woman. Now, yeah. are, are, I'm asking a question, though. Did you put your hands on the 13-year-old girl, which led to this altercation with the pack of 13 and two, uh, 11 to 13-year-olds? Yes or no? Man, the BBK was in nowhere around that girl, man. Well, then why did the pack of 11 to 13-year-old boys start to get in your face and come after you? Oh, uh, because, uh, and I guess, you know, we just have to roll with the truth because, you know, I'm from down south, you dig? And I have sisters and a mom, and, you know, basically, as far as calling anybody a bitch, that's fighting words. Okay, so that's why did you call her a bitch? What problem? Oh. Okay. What did she do the, that got you all worked up to the okay. point where you called her a bitch? Okay, my my reason and my reason is 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 pretty doggone solid. I mean, we all love going out and calling thirteen year old girls <laughs> bitches, but I just want to no. know what his reason wow. is. What was your reason? Go ahead. My my reason was, T man, all of them was cussing me out like they was all adults. You know what I'm saying? But and why? They, why did they all of a sudden start cursing you out? Why? Okay, because you were a little too close to their fun. They didn't think no. you belonged. I, okay, the more to the story is I pass by and I say, oh, mm, that's nasty. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Based on what I had seen, you know, because it was so sexual and it was so heated, I ain't had no choice, you know, because I holler at people. And they didn't you know? ask They didn't ask for your critique, so when right. you offered the critique, they were a little bit uh, annoyed that you were even getting your nose. Right, in, uh, in their business. In their business, I in their business which, yeah. which is and why they fired back at you, which is why you called her a bitch, which is why the pack of 13, <laughs> 11 to 13 year olds went after the ham sandwich man, which is why it almost turned uglier than it turned, Terry, until and the cops man, got there. Right, Look, and then you man, got Not only in. that, the mom told me that I ain't had no business saying, um, that was nasty. I told the mom that I was just doing my regular stuff, just walking. Yeah, he was just making his rounds. Yeah, yeah he was just know, being just, hammy. Just, just mm -hmm. looking at things that was interested, and you know. Terry, you know, these girls were your daughter's age. Yeah. Out there in the summer nights doing the pussy pop. Wow. Not, well, not good, really. Mm -hmm. But honestly, not good. Uh -huh. Well, they, 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 they know they know about them songs when it says lean with it, rock with it. Mm. They, they, they know now. Yes. Trust the plus on that, I'm sharing no, but the only thing I got to tell them parents, you know what I'm saying, 
Yes. They they know that a lot of when a, when a lot of their children leave, a lot of a lot of them children leave and go hop on, you know. On pop, yes. Now, uh, <laughs> were you just saying that it was nasty because you were frustrated that you weren't thirteen again, Hammy, and you couldn't join in on the pussy pop fun? Man, T man, when I was thirteen, my mama had rules and regulations on me, and she socked it to my ass like a cut off stocking. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, so it hey, sounds like he wasn't out running the streets <laughs> like you know, these little girls. Good. My, 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 my mama really on the for real lean with it, rock with it on me when it was time for me to catch a whooping. So then, your your ultimate it, problem here was with the parents of these eleven to thirteen year old girls who allowed them to be out doing the pussy pop fun while they should have been more under a supervised eye. Well, you know what I'm saying. You know, I grew up, you know, technical like that. You know, but like I say, it is rules and regulations. All right, and, and it certainly has hurt. It certainly has served the ham sandwich man well. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, those rules and regulations really yes. paid off. He's lucky he didn't get served. That could have definitely happened. <laughs> <laughs> that could have been ugly. Dangerous. Yeah. Right now. I've been served in right now. It's not good. <laughs> that could have been seconds away if the cops didn't arrive. So, uh, a good job. By the men in blue <laughs> right. and the women. <laughs> Preventing that from happening. <laughs> thank you for being out there, Ham Sandwich Man, and thank you for bringing what's going on on the streets to this radio program. <laughs> Terry will be doing the pussy pop before the end of the show. <laughs> <laughs> the Ham Sandwich Man. Mm. Couple of here, Terry. Uh, 27, 51 seconds, somebody writes T-Man, me and my grandma in the house right now doing the pussy pop and listening to the show. Oh, come on now. Mm-hmm. Leave grandma out of it. 9, 24, 23 seconds. Larry Johnson lost Willie Rowe, Sean Alexander lost Steve Hutchinson, so I'm taking Ladanian, Ladanian Tomlinson. Hey, you know what? Oh. Although I said earlier that 80 to 90 percent of the people in the drafts of America will be taking Sean Alexander with the number one pick in the fantasy football drafts that are on the horizon, Terry. I would not be one of them. I, in fact, like this text pager suggests, would be leaning towards taking LT. Oh, really? Although with a uh, new quarterback there, that could be a problem, too. Uh, you know, it's just a, Who is their new quarterback? Paul Coles and everyone. Mm-hmm. Oh. Everybody's got a reason. I, I may have to take Sean Alexander with the first pick. Uh, not that... I don't like to take a guy off such a big year. I like to... As I said, look around the curve, which is why this guy writes the following at 9, 12, and 10 seconds. Fantasy football picks are all about last year's stats. T-Man, don't be a dummy. You, what are you supposed to pick based on this year's stats? Well, obviously you can't pay, pick based on stats that don't exist yet, but you got to have some foresight ability. you got to be able to look around the curve. Man, I wish you were in my fantasy football league. I <laughs> laugh at people like you that love picking off last year's stats. For example, Terry. Yes. I was assisting one of my friends in his fantasy football draft. Unbeknownst to the people in his draft, I was on the phone with him <gasps> while they were all uh, doing their picking. Isn't that kind of cheating? I prompted him. Oh, of course, Terry. That's my motto. Win if you can, <laughs> lose if you must, but always cheat. Okay. Uh, in the third round, he had one of the early first third round picks. I prompted him. I, I convinced him to take Larry Fitzgerald, Terry, at the time. Really? He was... Reluctant to take him, but I, with my persuasive uh, ways, Terry, convinced him to do so. And then he told me on the phone that everyone was laughing at him for making that pick. Huh. However, you'd be so lucky. As a matter of fact, luck wouldn't even be able to be factored in. You won't be able to get Larry Fitzgerald in the third round this year. Larry Fitzgerald is, if not Steve Smith, Terry, the best wide receiver available in fantasy football drafts around the country. Oh, okay. And uh, looking around the curve, yep. being able to predict what isn't necessarily there, mm -hmm. that's what wins you fantasy football, Terry. <sighs> Buy those diamonds in the rough! So you enjoy your little last year's picks and see uh, if you can fi finish as well as mid-pack this year, sir. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. Man. Well, then Terry's got it down to a science. Picking Matt Leinert, he has no stats from last year. Mm -hmm. Nowhere to go but up. Okay. <laughs> well, well, he had yeah. a great last year. Mr. Holdout. <laughs> yes. All right. So you know what? what? Bottom line is, call my 900 number. I'll have that up and running soon. Okay, it's up soon. I did, because I don't have the number yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I may start one, because I really feel the desperate need for one. Let me give away some yeah, VIP... You'll, you'll Oh, I'm sorry. What's that, Stephen? Well, I was going to say you'll put us on hold for five minutes to That's collect right. your, you know, four ninety nine a minute for five minutes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then I was like, go with your heart. <laughs> <laughs>
One eight six 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 three T man. VIP passes to summer. No, to. Uh, oh, that was done already. Yes, that's J O seven. To E D O six. Who wants them? Oh, awesome. Let's go to Crystal. Is Crystal there? You're on the air. Hi. How are you? I'm fine. What can we do for you, Crystal? Um, I was wondering if you can give me some VIP ticks. <laughs> some VIP ticks? You mean like what? Like a little a little neck twitch or something like that? <laughs> no, the ticket. Oh. <laughs> are you available this, not this coming Friday, but a week from Friday to be in the Pepsi VIP suite? I am. Mm-hmm. And as I ask of all other callers that are interested in being in this particular suite, what do you bring to the proverbial table? Um, I can bring a lot. I'm really spontaneous. I like to have fun. I have a nice booty. <laughs> mm. I'm really looking forward to meeting the woman who comes on and says, uh, you know, I hate fun, T-Man. I despise it and uh, try to ward it off at all times. <laughs> I like to have fun. Is that the greatest line you ever heard? I know. I huh? like to have fun. Mm. That's good. It's a good start. <laughs> but nonetheless, Crystal, you're in. Yay! Yay! It's, it was my birthday yesterday, and I was... Yeah, whatever. Who are you bringing with you? Huh? Who are you going to bring with you with your two passes? Um, um... Oh, I get two passes? Yeah! She wanted to come alone, even better. Oh. Now, actually, you get one. I'll wow. Pro I'll probably bring my sister and, um, my friend. No, okay, you know what? You only get the two includes. Uh, no, Pasty will work the math with her. Okay, <laughs> she's perfect. Though. Yeah, she's yeah, really a great candidate. Now I know she brings a lot to the VIP ten. There you go. <laughs> mm -hmm. And we'll have a calculator for you at all times in the suite. <laughs> I'm gonna pitch a VIP tent. Mm. I bet. <laughs> Let me give me another pair here. Let's give away another pair. Who do we got? Let's go to uh, Phil. Hey, what's going on? Man? Yes, Phil. Uh, well, I kind of like to have some tickets. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't even have to ask. What? Also, I was trying to call earlier because, uh, you know, there's something else that creates uh, man babble. Man what? It's the, there's something else that creates man boobs. Uh-huh. What's that, Phil? Uh, that would be the good old green stuff. Mm-hmm. Marijuana? Marijuana? The, uh, the, the ganja uh, seems to uh, increase growth. I've never heard that one before. I, I read it somewhere. I, I don't know if I believe it. You know. <laughs> he read it somewhere. He wrote it down in the I'm not going to say where because I'd be lying if I said I knew. Mm -hmm. oh, <laughs> well, you know, it's little tidbits like this that make Phil just an amazing person to have in the VIP suite, Terry. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Uh, yes. And I'll, I'll bring some green stuff. <laughs> you like right. that fun, though? Yeah. <laughs> Hates fun. I, I think so. Yeah. All right, Phil, hang on. You're a winner, too. Hey, thanks. All right, there it is. Phil and Crystal. Mm-hmm. Who knows, Terry? They could be soulmates. Could they? Phil's got the green stuff. <laughs> and, uh... Crystal can't add. <laughs> <laughs> Match made in heaven. No, what you're looking at is actually 42 inches long. <laughs> <laughs> You're just doing the math wrong. Yeah. The T-Man.